Welcome back to another FPL Deadline stream, this time out of Blank Gaming 29. I've activated my free hit. Many of you watching have also done the same, but there is a split in terms of chip strategies, and it'll be very interesting to see how it all pans out. I've got two yellow flag players in my starting 11 for the free hit in Region and Oli Watkins. I've covered the latest updates in my recent videos. Region should be good to go to play against Burnley. And with Watkins, Emery is hopeful they will be available tomorrow on the Sunday. And I'm currently going for this 3-4-3, free -free, which includes Flecken in goal, a back three of Region, Pedro Borro and Doughty, a midfield four of Bowen, Madison, Son and Bailey, and that front three of Tony, Morris and Watkins. But one thing I've changed throughout the week is Alanga versus Morris, and that could something that's something I could change before the deadline. The captain seem a bit locked in, I think, with Huming Son. There are some rumours of James Madison not training. He wasn't pictured and he wasn't seen in any of the videos, and that's why I'm not going to take a risk by going for that differential. But I think if Madison does start... I think he's a great option. He hasn't blanked this season away from home or at Craven Cottage throughout his Premier League career. Let's get straight into your questions as always. Drop a like, smash the subscribe button, check out my podcast on Spotify and Amazon Music, leave a five-star review. It all goes a long way to helping the channel grow. Rowan says, hey Dylan, Gibbs White or Elanga? I would go for Elanga and actually we might as well get straight into it and show you the stats comparison between those two players and look I'm not going to say it's a massive difference but Elanga does have most of these key stats in his favour. More goals, more assists, the XG is higher, expected assists is definitely in Morgan Gibbs White's camp and also key passes over double or double the amount of Elanga and in terms of big chances created Elanga does have two more. Now some of these underlying numbers are very impressive for Elanga, he's only 5.1 million but he does underperform quite significantly in most of these games. But I have to say, I think Alanga is a great option this week and Luton Town have a big problem, I mean, considering everywhere around the pitch, but particularly on their left and right flanks. And Alanga can play on both of those sides. I think he's a great option for game at 29. I'm trying to find a way to just sneak him into my starting 11. And if I can do so, I'd be quite happy with that. I think going for one Nottingham Forest attacker is definitely the play. Some of you might even go for two of them. So Elanga and Gibbs White could be your best bet. Now with Gibbs White, he is on penalties, but I still prefer Elanga through his open play threat. I'm not really too impressed by Gibbs White this season from an FPL perspective, but if you have a different opinion, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. When Nottingham Forest faced Luton Town early in the season, they were 2-0 down, made a late comeback, 2-2 draw. Chris Wood scored both goals and Elanga got the two assists. So take that with a pinch of salt, of course. Football isn't always going to be repeated in terms of cycles, but I have to say Elanga is my preference. Let's go back now to my team and then later on I'll go for some different screens and talk about all the key information you need to know. Bowen or Barkley? Bowen for me. Sindra says, hey Dylan, is it worth selling Kirkes to Region, Ruslev, Nottingham Forest defender or Van der Ven to Romero, Dragosin, Udogi from minus four? If so, which defender and play of 10? Um, for a minus four, I'm not really too sure. Um, if I had to pick a defender, it would be a Spurs one because they also have a good fiction gimmick 30 and decent games up until gimmick 34. So if I had to pick, it'd be Romero or a doggy. But honestly, I don't think it's worth taking a minus four hit for a defender. I'd be looking at the midfielders or forwards instead. Or sell Barkley to Kudus Bone for a minus four and play with nine. I actually prefer that one, uh, to be fair. Um, but then again, I mean, it's all about maths, right? You've got nine players already. You don't want to sell one of your playing players for a hit. Yeah, I think if I had to pick one transfer, it's probably Romero or a doggy in for a minus four, but you don't need to get to 10 players, in my opinion. Raman says, hi Dylan, hope you're doing well. Likewise, which one is much more preferable to start in the free hit, Alanga or Kudus? Um, I don't know about much more preferable. I think there are fine margins. Kudus scored a brace on Thursday night and West Ham looked very impressive against Freiburg, but I think in, based on the fixture, I actually do prefer Alanga this week. That's my current preference, but Kudus is a great shout. Zenzone says, Morning Dylan, free hit this week. Flecken, Doughty, Bodrot, Ruslev, Bailey, Alanga, Son, Madison, Bowen, Tony, Watkins, Bench, Muniz, Toflo, Robinson. Anything you would change? I like it. Um, my slight preference is Region over Ruslev, but I think that's absolutely fine. To be honest, there's not much, if anything, I would change. It's, I want to say, a template pick. You do have some differentials in there like Ruslev, but 
most of us will have a very solid base of Flecken, Doughty, Borro. Uh, then you're going to go for maybe a Bailey or Douglas Louise, Son, Madison, Bowen, Tony Watkins. So it's standard stuff. It's very good. And I like the differentials you've gone for. So there's not really much to change. Maybe some players on your bench, but it's not a big deal, really. Um, for example, Robinson, I know to cover the Fulham defence, he's probably the best option apart from Leno in goal. But I just don't see Fulham keeping a clean sheet against Spurs. Start Watkins, yeah. For me, I said it yesterday in my final team selection video. If you have Ollie Watkins on the free hit or your normal team, my advice is to start him and have a good cover on your bench, especially for free hitters. I think for those of you without the free hit, you're not going to have anyone on your bench, but I think that's the play. You start him. Maybe you don't captain him, but I would definitely start him. Daryl says who to sell Watkins or Solanke to get Salah back. Looking at the long term and the fixtures, I'd rather sell Watkins. But the problem is, I don't want to sell Watkins this week, you know. And also in game week 30 against Wolves at home, no. So um, it's a difficult one because Solanke has bad fixtures from game week 33 until the end of the season. Whilst with Watkins, no uh, double game weeks coming up uh, for the rest of the campaign. And the fixtures turn in game week 31. So my preference would be to sell Watkins in game week 31 or to sell Solanke in game week 30. Uh, if I had to pick one, it's probably going to be Solanke, but a lot is based on budget and your um, your team situations. And also, let's say, for example, Wolves lose to Coventry and they're likely to double, well, they're likely to feature in Gimmick 34 against Bournemouth, who would then double, then you'd rather keep Solanke in that case. So I think that's definitely something to keep an eye on. But yeah, if you could, if money was no issue, I'd definitely rather sell Solanke. Transfer Watkins? Uh, no, keep him. Keep him all day long. Good evening to you, Nuclear Atoms. Will Region and Watkins start? I believe so. Rune says, hi, Dylan. Do you think Manis is good for two weeks or too much minutes risk? Well, Jimenez is back and I believe Broya is also available. So yeah, there is a slight minutes concern. I don't think he'll play the full 90, but it's his spot to lose he's been scoring so many goals five in his last six so i personally think he will start in gimmick 29 and potentially in gimmick 30 but if he plays quite poorly against tottenham he might be dropped for the following game because fulham have some options in that forward position also williams for two weeks or gusto just for gimmick 30 i'd rather go for gusto to be honest uh, that'd be my personal preference there as well arthur nice says hi dylan thoughts on william and awini on a free hit the thing was with awini I'm not even sure if he's fully fit and Chris would play the full 90 in the last game when he just came back from injury and with Wood scoring two goals against Luton Town early in the season I'm not sure if Awani will get the nod here uh, as for Willian he's got a good record against Tottenham historically but yeah in terms of Fulham attackers I think Moniz is my favorite by far um, I'm not too interested in Willian and the rest but it could be a decent shout sometimes a player loves to play against a certain team and Willian could be one of them against Tottenham but yeah, I'd be more keen on Awini out of the two you mentioned, but I'm also not sure he's going to start, and I personally think Chris Wood will instead. Yogesh says, Solanke to Tony and Saka to Madison minus four, or just do one and don't take hits. We'll wildcard next week. Yeah, if you're wildcarding next week um, and you've got a decent number for this game week, I think that's absolutely fine. Now, that is tricky because I really back Madison to do well this week, but he wasn't pictured in training, at least yesterday. In the videos, he wasn't seen. And it's Tony's birthday, apparently, today. Uh, whenever I hear that, you know, the player does quite well FPL-wise. Uh, look, I think Tony is probably my slight preference, uh, just based on that Madison, you know, video thing. It's probably not a big deal, but that does swing things a little bit for me. Uh, I'd probably rather go for Tony. Will Shaw says, considering each play in isolation, which attackers do you think are worth a hit? Uh, well, Son and Madison go about saying for me, Tony, Watkins still, I, I think he's going to start. Uh, apart from that, I'd probably look at maybe a Wissa as a differential. A Langa, I really like. So yeah, there's a few options I'd potentially take a minus four hit for, but not in the defense or goalkeeper position, of course. But in the midfield and forward line, I'd be open to it. Even Leon Bailey could be a good shout. FY Edits, good to see you. Anyone to consider instead of Son Captain? Yeah, I've covered it throughout the week. Madison was my original captain in the first team selection video. Um, he's got a great record against Fulham. I alluded to it early in the stream. Also, Ivan Tony against Burnley. I also like Watkins still, and Jared Bowen could be a nice, decent shout there too. I think those five players are the best, including Son. Apart from that, I mean, you can always go for a differential like Alanga or um, a Wissa, but I think I'd rather stick to one of those five so-called essential options for Blank Gimmick 29. Keep Barkley or sell him for Alanga. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather have Alanga, I'm not going to lie to you, but I definitely wouldn't take a hit to sell one for the other. As for a free transfer, 
maybe you could do something else with that and just gain another player. That's something I would consider for your team. Douglas Suiz or Kudus or Alanga. I'd probably go for Alanga this week. My free hit team is Flecken, Region, Doughty, Bodro, Kudus, Son, Willian, Bowen, Douglas, Luiz, Tony, and Awini. Yeah, that's a good team. And Willian, there's a differential that could definitely pay off. Like someone else mentioned him earlier. Great record against Tottenham. Um, yeah, the back line, quite standard stuff. The midfield, two differentials in there. Um, even Douglas Suiz isn't in so many teams I've seen um, on Twitter and YouTube and also the Discord server. So yeah, that's absolutely fine. I'm just not sure if Awini starts, to be honest. Um, I know actually it was you who mentioned William and Awini. That's fair enough. But yeah, I'm, I'm just not too sure if Awini starts, like I mentioned earlier. Will Watkins start or should I swap him for Manise? I think Watkins will start. That's just my personal opinion. It's just a cut on his leg. It just depends on how it heals. Does he feel pain when he stretches his leg, for example? Uh, I mean, why would Son not start? He's definitely going to start 100%. It's Madison who wasn't in the training videos yesterday, but I still think he'll start as well. Uh, welcome, Dave. Um, hope you're well as well. A little late, just finished work. No worries. Good to see you. Um, Amatrain says free hitter here. There's a lot of free hitters in the chat. Um, Kudus slash Paqueta. I do prefer Kudus, but Paqueta's a nice shout, actually. He's on penalties as well, potentially. Uh, I'd rather go for Kudus. Gibbs White or Elanga? Elanga. Johnson or Son? I mean, there's no debate there. Huming Son. Uh, and Wood or Morris? Now, that is actually a tricky one. I think Chris Wood could be a nice differential up front, but I think I'd go for Morris. I'd go for the home advantage, and there is a slight chance that Awini starts. So it goes both ways, but I think Chris Wood is more likely than Awini. Having said that, I would rather go... Um, Let's see. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, someone just pointed out. Uh, thank you for that, actually. The timer is definitely funny. There's not 11 hours left for the deadline. So thank you for the person who pointed that out. Uh, I appreciate it. I don't know why the, the timer bugged out. So thank you to... Um, let me try to get the name up. Um, thank you, Courage, for pointing that out. Um, Morris or Wissa? Um... I'm currently going for Morris, but that's mainly because I'm going for Flecken and Region at the moment, alongside Avin Tony. But in isolation, I'd argue that Wiss is slightly better, actually. Will Madison start? I believe so. Um, Dodge says, currently on free hit. <laughs> Another one. Uh, Leno, Udogi, Doughty, Bregion, Bassi, Vitinho, Gibbs White, Madison, Son, Paqueta, Bailey, Tony, Watkins, Wisser. Not sure whether to start Wisser over Gibbs White. I probably would. Um, Gibbs White is on penalties, but I think Wisser is a better option. Now... I'm not sure what you're doing with your goalkeepers. I'm guessing Martinez is going to start for you and you're going to bench Bassi. But yeah, I wouldn't start Fulham defenders against Tottenham. That'd be my personal opinion. The rest is fine. Vitinho could be a decent shot actually from Burnley. But yeah, um, good uh, free hit squad. You've got Paqueta in there as well over Bowen and Kudus, who I do prefer to be quite honest with you. But Paqueta is a decent differential. Idle in his Templar is okay for this game week. Um, yes, it is okay. I'm not going to lie though. A minus eight to get to 10 isn't ideal. Um, I would have rather just taken a minus four to get to nine, but if the two players you took a hit for include one of Bowen, Tony, Son, Madison, or Watkins, then I think that's justified. But that's all down to personal preference. Uh, I think for a lot of people, if you can take a minus four hit and get to seven, eight players, and there are good quality players, then I would save the free hit for later in the season. But it's all team dependent, as always. Is it worth to take a minus four to sell Richarlison for Madison? Yeah, Richarlison could be in the squad, but you're right. He probably won't start the game. You've got Brennan Johnson and Werner, who are probably going to do so in his stead. Um, I'm not sure if it's worth a minus four hit to go to Madison. Um, I probably would, just about. But like I said, Madison wasn't in the videos yesterday for training, which does cause some concern. I probably would do it. Uh, also thinking about Gemic 30, but Richarlison will be available by then, that's for sure. Music Kiwi says, got the same team but Wood and Gibbs White for Bailey and Morris and taking a risk on Tony Captain. Yeah, the birthday boy, apparently. Um, that could be a nice shout against Burnley. Yeah, that's fair enough. And Gibbs White over Bailey and um, yeah, Chris Wood over Morris. Pretty decent. I think there's not much to separate Morris and Chris Wood. If Wood starts, would you go for Wood over Wissa? Um, now, that's a great question and once again, very tough. But if you're not going for two Brentford defensive coverage in Flecken and Region or Ruslev, I probably would still go for Wissa. Very close one, though. Just imagine we get a league that Mbumo starts. Would you go for him? Not gonna. That's a great question. I probably would, actually. Um, I'd be very tempted by him. Um, I think he would then start over Bailey. It's not ideal, though, because I've also got a Langer who I'd like to start. 
you know, theoretically. But yeah, I think Mbuma could be an amazing differential. That's putting it lightly if he does start. Now, a lot of the appeal about Mbuma was if he's on penalties, like he was before Tony came back from suspension. But something Mbumo can do really well and help Brentford a lot. I think he links up very well with Ivan Tony, and both of them benefit from an FPL perspective. So that's a great question. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I'd probably be very tempted to. I'm not saying I definitely would buy him, but I'd be very likely to, I think. Nuclear Atom says, already on a minus four with bringing Madison and Morris. Take another hit for Alanga. Uh, depends who you sell. What's your plan in gimmick 30 and 31 too? But... I'm not a big fan. I don't think you need to take a minus 8 hit to get to 10, 11 players. I think a minus 4 for 9 is absolutely reasonable. I'm hearing Madison, a doubt. Like I mentioned, he wasn't in the videos yesterday. Uh, but I think a Spurs source did mention that he's been managed all week and the hope is that he'll be ready to start. Um, do I replace him with Paqueta or Kulusevski? If I had to pick one of those two players, I'd actually favour Kulusevski slightly more. But... Yeah, I personally think Madison will play. It's a shame because Madison was my original captain and that just really put me off the captaincy in general. But um, yeah, I think Madison will play personally. If you want to replace him and I had to pick between those two players, I would go for Kulusevski. Uh, currently playing with nine. Should I take a minus four for Tony to replace Solanke or Morris? Well, I wouldn't sell Morris this week for a minus four here. There's no way I'd do that. With Solanke, he's better between gimmicks 30 to 32. And to be honest, I'd rather have him than Morris over the rest of the season. But... Yeah, uh, I understand that, but I wouldn't sell Morris for a minus four here. If you really want Tony, I'd sell Solanke, and you can maybe buy him back next week, potentially for Morris, right? Because he's facing Tottenham away, then it's Arsenal away for Luton Town, and you can switch to Ivan Tony, who plays Manchester United at home, and I believe it's then Brighton at home, and then some very good fixtures from Gimmick 32 until the end of the season. Thank you, Dorge. Um, Henning says, I took a minus four and have nine players. Use free hit later. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely fair enough. I think a minus four hit is absolutely reasonable. Why Morris over others? Wood, Elanga, etc. Like I said, it's not locked in. Throughout the week, I've been changing between Elanga and Morris. I'm quite tempted to go for uh, Morris, but... Sorry, uh, for Elanga. The thing with Morris, though, is he has a good home record recently. I think he's returned in the last four home games at Kenilworth Road, and that's also something I do have in mind. Why not play the free hit? I've played the free hit. Um, you know, this squad that you see here is a free hit team. Uh, would you risk going without Doughty? I mean, it's not a massive risk, to be honest. The only reason I'm going for him is the attacking threat. I think Luton Town will concede, and I even said that for double gimmick 28 for both games, but Doughty always has that assist in his locker from open play and particularly from set pieces. Now, if there was a genuine defender alternative, if I could also go for a doggy or Romero, for example, I'd probably go for it and drop Doughty. But the problem is I want two Spurs attackers. And as a result, I've gone for this setup. Madison minus four in Gimmick 30 for Salah or Kulusevski no hits for Salah in Gimmick 30. Um, I think the more logical pick would be Kulusevski in that case, but I'm not going to lie. I do prefer Madison. I really do. But is it worth an extra minus four hit over Kulusevski? With this doubt as well in mind about him not in the training videos, maybe it's just a risk not worth to be taken. But if you're asking me, I'm still very bullish on Madison. I probably would take the minus four hit for him or buy him in this week and then take a minus four for Salah next week. Um, will you take an extra minus four for a Forest midfielder to sell Saka? Um, no, because that's a minus eight hit. And I don't think you'd want to take a minus eight or above this week if possible. Uh, minus eight is the absolute limit I would do. Um, for Gimmick 29. Alexander puts his free hit team. Pretty good stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of our teams are going to be quite similar, but if you look at the grand scheme of things, people who aren't engaged in FPL, maybe those just playing the free hit, there will be some differences with them as well. You do have Gibbs White. That's a differential. You've also got uh, Ruslev and even Kudus. Those are free differentials for you. I think that's absolutely fine, Alexander, but I'm not going to lie. Gibbs White... His underlying numbers aren't particularly great. I'd rather go for a Langa instead, and he's also a differential, but it's all down to personal preference. ANWR says one free transfer to have eight players, minus four for nine or minus eight for 10. I'd rather just do a minus four for nine. Now, the only scenario where I'd say go for the minus eight is if you're buying one of Son, Madison, Tony, Watkins, or Bowen as well. If you're not buying one of those five players, particularly the Spurs midfielders, you don't need to. Just stick with nine. Uh, Dakesh says, hi Dylan, how are you brother? All good, what about you? Whom to bench, Alanga or Bailey? Well, I've currently got Bailey, but I'm not going to lie, I'm uncomfortable benching Alanga. And regarding Wissa, I transferred in for the free hit. No Wissa this game week. I'm thinking that today is Tony's day, hoping they will score. Wait, Wissa, I transferred in free hit and Wissa this game week. 
or I'm guessing you're going for Tony now. Um, I'm not going to lie, I would like Wissa if possible. I think he's a good option, but I also agree with you that Tony is the one today. I think he will outscore Wissa, but let's wait and see. Morning, Dylan. How is Watkins today? Oh, no idea, honestly, Gary. I wish I knew for sure, but I'm personally quite bullish that he will be available. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about Ollie Watkins, to be honest. Let's see how it all pans out. Do you prefer wildcard 30 or 31? Uh, for my team at the moment, I do prefer the wildcard in 31, but I think one advantage of playing it in 30 is for those that still have Haaland, you're able to buy Salah with the wildcard in Gemic 30 and captain him. But um, I'm quite happy with my team in Gemic 30 and 31, but I might still wildcard anyway, just to set myself up better for future doubles as well. Uh, Forest Source, Awani is injured, which means that Wood will start. Would you prefer to captain Wood or Alanga as a differential captain? Uh, let me know where you got that source from. But yeah, Awani was struggling, um, according to some Forest fans, so that does make sense. Um, who would I rather captain? I still prefer Alanga, but Wood, uh, look, he's got 13 points against Luton Town last time out of a brace. And um, yeah, I think Wood and Alanga could combine very well once again. Um, in this fixture but uh, yeah Elang is my preference he's a midfielder extra point for scoring a goal clean sheet point if they even get one um, and I think Elang is probably better for bonus points as well Mukherjee says should I take an extra minus four um, I think I covered this mate but yeah I probably um, wouldn't take the extra minus four hit to be honest I that's my personal preference Watkins to Tony don't sell Watkins is my advice it's up to you what you do with it but I wouldn't sell Watkins I personally think he will be available uh, Non-free hitter, two out of Bowen, Madison or Tony for Saka, Foden or Haaland. Um, Tony and Madison for me. Just bear in mind that Madison is a slight doubt, you could argue. He wasn't in the videos yesterday for training, but apparently he's been managed all week. I personally would go for Tony and Madison though. And who would I sell? Uh, well, yeah, it would have to be Haaland. And I'd probably sell Foden, but yeah, it, it's a tricky one because... I do prefer Foden for Gemic 30 over Saka, but in Gemic 31, you'd much rather have Saka at home to Luton Town. Uh, Gemic 30, uh, minus 12 in. I, uh, I'm not going to lie, mate. I think a minus 12 is really excessive this week, especially when it includes players like Salah, who, you know, they're really in place for the future and that hit will pay off. That's absolutely fine. But buying Salah in right now, I'm not sure that's the way to go. Uh, as for Mabama as well, I mean, yeah, Muniz and Son look great, especially Son, but yeah, and you also sold Watkins. I'm not going to lie, I'm a train, as I try to be honest on this channel. I don't think that minus 12 hit will pay off. I hope I'm wrong, but I really think that selling Watkins as part of a minus 12 is going to backfire. I'm going for triple Fulham defence. I'm not going to lie, mate. I wouldn't even go for one, let alone three, but FPL is about playing it your way and doing what you think is best. So if you think Fulham keep a clean sheet, back your gut, and hopefully you're right, by the way, because I honestly wouldn't mind that. You know, FPL-wise, I would suffer, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. I do like a, an upset from time to time. Devil's Advocate, Morrison, uh, or was it Morris, doesn't start, and as a result, uh, oh, Madison. Um, as a result, Richardson does. Um... I mean, yeah, if Madison does have a problem and, you know, he's feeling pain, you could be onto something there. But I personally think Madison will play. To my above question regarding Solanke, Morris versus Tony, is Tony essential? I wouldn't say he's essential in the long term, but for this week specifically, if you want to secure a green arrow, I think there are five players you want to cover, at least four of them. I think Bowen you could maybe put in fifth and he's maybe less important, but I think the four you really want are Son, Madison, if he's fit, um, Tony and Watkins. Don't know how impactful Bailey would be with the changes in Villa's midfield. Yeah, I mean, look, he did score after, um, you know, well, he, he scored against Ajax uh, later on in the game after Watkins came off. Um, and I think Aston Villa suffered another injury later in that game. But of course, McGinn was available for that. And um, let's wait and see what the impact will be with no John McGinn in the Premier League. You could be right. Um, and look, to be honest with Bailey. I like him as a player. I haven't owned him all season, but Elanga for me does have the highest ceiling this week. You might be right. Bailey or Douglas Luiz? I do prefer Bailey because of the away record, uh, which isn't great for Bailey, but it is better than Douglas Luiz, who is a bit of a home merchant, you could argue. Now, Douglas Luiz can easily get an assist, um, but I don't think his ceiling is that high in away matches. Thank you for the super chat bullet, FMV. Massively appreciated. Uh, hi Dylan, how many points you hope for Gamic 29? That is a great question. That's something I actually thought about yesterday. Um, I think what I'm really interested in is not 
really the number of points, but how much I gain over what I would have done if I didn't, you know, use the free hit and I took hits, and also what I gain over non-free hitters. So if I can gain 20 plus points on the rest, I'd be very happy with that, to be honest. Um, but I think, yeah, um, in terms of a specific number of points, I'd say 50 plus. I know it's only four fixtures, but I think, yeah, if I can get over 50, I'd be quite happy with that. But it's all dependent. If everyone hauls, it seems, and I'm getting the least, then of course that'll be a, a different story. But um, yeah, I'd say 50 plus I'd be quite happy with. What do you think of Manis? The best Fulham asset. Great form. Five goals in the last six games. I think he had seven shots, by the way, in double gimmick 28. But yeah, Tottenham, of course, their defense isn't great. They're there to be targeted. Um, there's a slight doubt of Manis in the long term with the likes of Breuer and... Um, I'm forgetting his name, Jimenez now being available. But yeah, I think with Manis, I think there are better options in the forward line. I prefer Morris, Chris Wood, Tony, Watkins, and a few others there like Wissa. Already took a hit. I have minus, sorry, I have eight players, but includes Madison Watkins. Should I free hit instead? Like I said with Madison, don't, you know, be too, you know... <laughs> Oh, by the way, I have to say, we have over 400 people watching. Thank you very much for those that are tuning in. Be sure to drop a like and get this stream to over 200. That is going to be our aim. And also subscribe to the channel. Check out all the links in the description below for the Spotify, Amazon podcast, etc. But uh, going back to the question, uh, I do apologize for that. Um, I'm not too concerned with Watkins. I think he's going to start. With James Madison, by the way, I also think he's going to start too. But there are some doubts that really stem from yesterday. And then you had a Spurs source. I think it was Paul O'Keefe who said that Madison has been managed all week, but um, you're fine. I think with eight players with those two, you're absolutely fine. I understand why you're a bit apprehensive and maybe a bit cautious, but I wouldn't be too concerned if I were you. Um, let's see. So, yeah, we're going to go through a few different screens very soon. Just going to answer a few more questions first. Um, took a minus four. Should I take a further hit to have Region to make it nine players? No. I don't think you need to take a minus four hit for a defender. Thoughts on Wiss and Kulisevsky. I'm more keen on Wissa. I think he's a nice differential this week. He got eight points against Burnley early in the season, and he scored in three consecutive games. Brennan Johnson has a differential to Madison. There's a slight rotation risk with Brennan Johnson with Timo Werner, but even off the bench, Brennan Johnson has done quite well in recent games. Um, I don't mind that too much, to be fair, but I do prefer Madison. I'm not going to lie to you. If Madison's fit and he's going to start, it's Madison all day long for me. Stop Kudus over Douglas Luiz. Yeah, I think so. Do you think Wood will start? Uh, yes, I do. Now, I'm not sure where, I think it was Yusuf who said that a forest source um, indicated that Awani is injured. I'm not sure what source that was, but either way, if you're asking me, I think Wood will start. Bailey or Morris? Um, tricky one. I think in terms of the Aston Villa-West Ham game, I think that'll be lower scoring than Nottingham Forest-Luton Town. I think I have a slight preference for Bailey though. Just for the quality of player. Elanga or Luis? I'd go for Elanga, that's for sure. Um, I already took a free hit. What to do? Only the wild card is left. Right, yeah. So I did actually upload a wild card video on my channel and it will help you build a solid foundation from Gimmick 30 and beyond and also have a good team for this week. So you can check that out and see if you like it. But yeah, um, to be honest... Um, Himanaka, if you do have seven, eight players this week and you're covering most of the key options, I wouldn't be too concerned. You can save the wild card for later in the season, uh, maybe even 30 or 31, or maybe save it for a little bit longer. Um, so I'm not sure without knowing your team, to be quite honest, but I think um, you could consider a wild card this week and it could actually work out for you. Tech says, should I do the Foden to Madison move now, or is there a chance we get leaks before the deadline? I think there is a chance. Uh, with West Ham, Aston Villa and Watkins news, I don't think so. But for every game today, there's always a chance of leaks. So, yeah, maybe wait. Obviously, I always say this with people. Don't make it until the very end, like I sometimes do with transfers. But, um, yeah, if there's 10 minutes to go, or 5 minutes to go, and, um, yeah, there's nothing really happening, then you can lock in your team. Um, of course, it's all circumstantial. Some people aren't able to um, have that luxury, you know, being all over around the world. Thanks a lot about FPL, Dylan. Um, taking your advice by heart. Thank you very much, Asante Sana. Thank you very much, uh, Juma. Not to continue. Um, well, apparently Awani is injured. I'm not. I have to verify that. I don't like uh, sometimes, you know, seeing something in the live chat and then finding out that it isn't true. But I do trust people and their intentions anyway. Uh, thank you, Mr. T. No, I'm not on radio, but I appreciate it. 
Uh, Cabrani says, I put only two forwards because I'll be prepared for Gemic 30. That's absolutely fine. I'm not against that whatsoever. Sufal over Alex Moreno. I don't think Moreno starts. He played the full 90 against Ajax on Thursday, so not for me. Uh, I think Dean will start. So, yeah, Sufal over Alex Moreno. Absolutely fine. Morris or Gibbs White? Morris. Adnan says, do I need to free hit? So you've got Ariola, Doughty, Pedro Porro, Son, Madison, Alanga, Bowen, Watkins, Tony. No, you definitely don't need to free hit. You've got nine players there. You're covering most of the key options, if not all of them. That's fine. Uh, like I always say, the team is not fully locked in, especially because it's a free hit. I can make transfers, you know, as much as I want until the deadline. There could always be a change. Uh, and like I mentioned, the captain see a slight chance of that changing. Um, Alanga over Morris or Bailey is another thing I'm considering. And maybe one or two transfers or changes. But yeah, um, it's not fully locked in. That's the gist of it. Should I take a minus four hit for Fafana? No. I think Fafana could be the by far the best option Burnley have, but I wouldn't take a hit for him. Matt's Collectible says eight players playing due to Van der Ven's injury. I wouldn't buy a defender for a minus four hit. You know, if I had to pick one, it would be you know, one of Odogi, Pedro Borro, or Romero, because they've got a good fiction gimmick 30 against Luton Town and decent fixtures until gimmick 34. But yeah, I don't like taking a hit for a defender this week specifically. I don't see clean sheets at all. I've got eight with Taylor, Region, and Watkins. Taking a minus four for Solanke to Tony. Should I do a minus eight for Foden to Paqueta, Kuda Solanga? Look, I get the sentiment. I do like those options you mentioned, especially Elanga this week. But I wouldn't take another hit. Especially to sell Foden. He'd, he'd probably want back by gimmick 31 or 32. So just stick with a minus four and uh, have nine players. That's absolutely fine. Elanga and Gibbs White or to bring Louise instead of one? I prefer Elanga. If I had to pick one player specifically, going for both isn't a bad shout. Um, I think Douglas Louise or Gibbs White is close. I do prefer Douglas Louise in general, but with the fixture being away, West Ham's also a tougher game on paper than Luton Town. Tricky. I think I'd go for Gibbs White this week. With only five players, should I go for a minus four? No free hit left. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. You know, go to minus four, get seven players, cover the key options. That's fine. What week for wildcard is team dependent Tiger and Guna? Um, for some people, it'll be Gimmick 30. For others, Gimmick 31. And if not, there'll be that strategy of wildcarding in 35 and bench boosting in 37. So I think one of those three gimmicks is probably best for most people. But even a Gimmick 32 or 33 could also be quite decent for some. And I think for someone in the chat earlier, maybe the best thing for him would be to wildcard right now with no free hit left and maybe in a bad situation for the blank. Bailey, Morris or Bailey Alanga? Uh, I'm currently going for Bailey Morris, but I'm not going to lie, Alang is very tempting. He's on the thumbnail, and he might come into my starting eleven. So, you know what? I'm going to go for Bailey Alanga. I'm not going to promise that I'm certainly going to stick with that because it's almost 50-50, I think, between Morris and Alanga, just in my opinion. I think the penalties makes it quite tough. If Morris didn't have the penalties, I'd definitely give Alanga the edge, and he'd be in my starting eleven already. Brian Chan says, take a minus four to sell Solanke for Tony to get 11 playing players. Um, I don't mind that so much. Just remember that Solanke has better fixtures in Gimmick 30 and 31. And also a minus four hit. You know, if you don't take a hit this week and you've got 10 players, I think you're almost guaranteed a green arrow, in my opinion. Playing eight without any hits, that's absolutely fine. Dylan, if not free hitting, should I take a hit and have a bench for Watkins? You know, unless the player you're taking a hit for is of high quality... Yeah, it's just tricky for me to justify many hits this week. But um, it's not a bad shout what you're saying there, Punjabi. You might be less optimistic about Watkins than I am. I personally think Watkins will start. So I just play him and not take the hit for the bench cover. Start Martinez or Sells? I think Sells has a better chance of a clean sheet. So I'd probably go for him. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm also expecting that to be a high scoring game. So it does go both ways. But um, I think Sells. Is Manis under threat with Raul? There is a slight threat, especially in the long term, but for this week, I'm very confident Manis will start and potentially in Gimmick 30 as well, but it will be a problem in the future, that's for sure. A hit for Alanga? I like Alanga this week, but I'm not sure I'd take a hit for him because you'd probably bench him in Gimmick 30, 31, 32. Forrest have good fixtures, but you might have a squad with eight attackers and Alanga will be your benchable attacker, so to speak. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I'd take a hit for Alanga, especially if you have to sell one of Sack or Foden to make that happen. Sell Ake for Pedro Porro for a minus eight. 
not a big fan of hits. You know, the only way I think that justifies is if you're not wildcutting next week and Pedro Porro faces Luton Town at home. In that case, fair enough. But for this week specifically, just don't expect defender hits to pay off this week. I really don't think it will. Is transferring Watkins worth it for a minus four when I only have five players? Um, wait, you're buying him in? I'm guessing that's what you're saying. Now, that's an awkward situation for those that don't have Watkins to buy him in right now. I still would, but it is risky. Uh, I'm not going to deny that. Um, I only have five players. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, I wouldn't sell Watkins, just to make that very clear. I would keep Watkins and start him in all scenarios, free hit or not. And in terms of taking a minus four hit to buy Watkins in, I just about say yes. I think he will start. I'm going to stick with that. Hopefully, I am correct and I don't mislead people. It's just my personal opinion after all. Esselman says, I only have six players playing in my team. Don't have the free hit left. Should I take a big hit? No. The maximum hits I'd take is a minus eight. And that's to bring in the likes of Son, Madison, Tony. You know, these players that you really think will make a difference. For some people, it will be Alanga, who's becoming very popular, it seems, in the community. Um, but yeah, minus eight hit maximum. Um, I think a minus four for seven is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, or well, actually, if you haven't made a transfer yet, you could actually get to eight players with just a minus four hit. That's absolutely fine. I don't think you need to take more than that. A doggy or Borro? Uh, Borro, but it's close. I really just go for Borro for the bonus points potential and the attacking threat, which he has over the Italian. I think Romero is the best for bonus points in general for the Spurs defense. Uh, he doesn't need an attack in return to get bonus points. I think once against Crystal Palace away from home, you know, Spurs conceded and Romero still got two bonus points. So, yeah, uh, for me, Borro out of those two. Is Alanga worth a minus four here? If you're planning to start him in future weeks too, then yes. But if you're not, then I'm not so sure about that. It's kind of like a one game week punt and there anything can happen. Any reason not to free hit this week? If you've got at least seven players, you cover most of the key options, uh, which I've mentioned a few times, to say the least, this week, then I think you're fine. You don't need to free hit. And also, you can use it in a week like 34, and you can trip up on certain teams like, let's say, Crystal Palace, for example, who will have a double potentially in that game week. And you can also avoid Spurs players. You might blank there. If you've got a Muniz right now, you can free him out in game week 34. So, of course, it's team-dependent, but you're always going to have opportunities to use these chips later in the season as well. Struggling to access FPL. Anyone else experiencing this problem? Um, I haven't, um, but hopefully that's not the case for everyone else. Maybe use a different browser uh, on your device or use a different device as well. Hi, Dylan. Which gimmick do you think I should get Haaland? I'd say gimmick 31 or 32. Um, yeah, I think Aston Villa at home is still a good fixture for him. Uh, thank you, uh, The Real Femi. It's the Spanish way of saying it. I speak Spanish. That's the only way I do it. I'd like to know why you're choosing Alanga over Gibbs White. I mentioned this comparison earlier in the stream, actually. Um, yeah, and Alanga has better stats. With Gibbs White, I think there's an over-reliance on penalties. Now, penalties is always a bonus for a player. But yeah, Alanga is certainly the one I choose. And also in the reverse fixture against Luton Town, Alanga got nine points and Gibbs White did blank there. But of course, that's only one game week. That's one small sample size. But um, yeah, Alanga for me is just a more explosive pick. Madison rumors of an injury, but nothing serious. Surely he plays. Yeah, um, I think Paul O'Keefe said that he's been managed all week, but the plan is to start him. Uh, they're hoping they will play. Morgan Gibbs White or Alanga? Um... Yeah, like I said, Alanga. Um, so I'll show the stats comparison once again because some new people have joined, but you can always rewind the stream and you can see towards the beginning, it's one of the first questions I answer, Gibbs White or Alanga. So let's first go to some different screens, including the FDR and Nottingham Forest are top over the next six game weeks. Burnley, Brentford, Fulham and Spurs are in the top five. Just bear in mind, a lot of this will change because game week 34 will have some blanks and doubles as well. In terms of the bottom five teams in the FDR, we've got Manchester United, Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Brighton, and Everton. For predicted points in game week 29, Son is top with 6.7. Tony, Bowen, Madison, and Fafana are in the top five. We've also got Wissa, Bailey, Watkins, Morris, and Muniz. So an interesting top 10, that's for sure. Some of these names you probably won't see again for the rest of the season in a top 10 list. In terms of price changes, I think this is up to date. I might have to refresh this, um, just in case I refresh it. Um, yeah, Morris and Doughty are set to go up in price tonight. Same with Wissa, Kudus, Flecken, Barkley, Region, Madison, Moniz, Son, Tony, 
All of them are set to go up in price tonight. And some price falls include Tavernier, Solanke, Saka, De Bruyne, Neto, Foden, Gordon. And then you've got more options there like Sinchenko, Allison. A lot of price changes happening tonight. I haven't seen that many uh, for a very long time. And more transfers will happen over the next few hours. And that means even more players will be added to the list potentially for tonight or for the next few days. In terms of Draft Pound, this is their new free hit team that they're suggesting. Yeah, with Ivan Tony, they haven't really shown him much love throughout the week, which I'm quite surprised by. They recommend Ariel and Goal, Romero, Doughty, and Region as the back three. Son, Bowen, Madison, Douglas Suiz, and Bailey as the midfield five. And then Watkins and Morris up front. The bench includes Sells, Tony, that Burnley defender, and Mengi. So... Yeah, that's what they're expecting. 58.5 expected points for their team and 58.1 for my current team. Um, anything else they're suggesting for my own squad? Um, they're suggesting Bowen as the vice captain and also changing the bench order. Yeah, I'm not sure why Dean is in there, by the way. I think I had him there to play around a little bit, but um, he's probably going to make way. Just go for Sufal. Yeah, there's a few things I could change in my free hit squad, to be quite honest with you. But um, yeah, for now, I think... Most of it's quite locked in. There's just a few minor details to tweak until the deadline, which you can see there is a, a timer that I'll show you very soon. Um, and uh, we still have quite a long way to go, less than two hours. And I'll be answering your questions in the meantime. So for those of you that aren't aware, this was the latest update on Ollie Watkins' injury in that 4-0 win over Ajax. Emery said, it is no more than a cut. I think it could be available for Sunday, but we'll have to wait for then. So let's wait and see. If he is available, I personally think he will start and he will be in that squad. In terms of some polls I put out um, over the last couple of days, I put vote for your blank gimmick 29 captain and Heung-Ming Son won by a landslide. Almost three quarters of the votes in second place is Tony with 13%. Then we've got Madison and Watkins sharing third spot with 7% of the vote. Then we've got which player will you go for this week? And 45% of you have gone for Kudus. In second is Morris. In third is Alanga. And Gibbs White is last. In terms of for your favorite option to occupy the third forward slot, we've got Morris with half of the votes. Wissa in second with 23%. Munis in third. And Chris Wood with 10%. He is a massive differential this week. He got 13 points against Luton Town earlier this season. And the last poll is to do with Ollie Watkins. And um, yeah, 83% of you think that he will start and 17% think that he won't. So you can vote for all of these polls on my community tab. So be sure to check that out. If you subscribe, you'll always see them pop up on your uh, timeline and they can help you with your decisions. And going back to that stats comparison, which I mentioned towards the beginning of the stream, Alanga versus Gibbs White. Alanga has more goals, assists, higher XG, big chances, triple the amount of Gibbs White, and even more big chances created. But in terms of creativity, you have to hand it to Gibbs White. He's got double the number of key passes, more expected assists. But I have to say, I think Alanga is the better pick, not just in terms of stats and underlying numbers, but also in terms of the high ceiling. He's done very well against Luton Town in the past. And I think from open play, he does offer more than Morgan Gibbs White. But you never know. This could be Gibbs White's, you know, weak. Who knows? I could be wrong. But I personally would prefer Alanga if I had to pick one Nottingham Forest attacker this week, I'd put Chris Wood in second and Gibbs White in third. And if we then go to FPL.team, which I always refer to in my videos and streams. So uh, FPL.team do suggest starting a Langer over Morris. And that's something I could do before the deadline. And um, yeah, there's a few things that could definitely be, you know, subject to change. Then going into Gemic 30, there's a lot to consider. I wouldn't have the funds to buy back Salah without having to wildcard or sell Erling Haaland as part of a minus four hit. There's a lot to discuss. My current plan is to buy Gusto in the back line, maybe even Connor Bradley. There's a lot that could certainly change over the next couple of weeks. We do have that international break after Blank Gimmick 29. And of course, those all important FA Cup fixtures, which will also influence future doubles and blanks. Let's now go back to my team and back to your questions. So hopefully that does answer a lot of the Morgan Gibbs White versus Alanga stuff that we did get. Alanga or Douglas Luiz? I'd go for Alanga there. Uh, Mara says, hi Dylan, how did it go in UCL Fantasy? Uh, pretty well. I mean, I'm a bit disappointed, um, you know, from my Mbappe versus Vinicius decision back in match day seven. That has cost me around 20 points, but still quite decent. Best time ever for Arsenal to face Bayern Munich. I have Watkins and Tony in the 11. Need a third to come for the bench in case Watkins misses out. Thanks. 
yeah, I mean, it's a great time for Arsenal to get revenge, but Bayern are still a wounded animal, so to speak. They've got some quality players. If they perform on the day, Bayern can still go through. And, you know, it's kind of a... Uh, Maybe bad luck for those four teams on that side of the draw. You could argue they're the four best teams left in the Champions League and they're all going to face each other and eliminate each other by the final stage. So we're going to have one of Atletico, PSG, Dortmund, you know, reaching the final, Barcelona. Yeah, yeah that's what the Champions League can be like sometimes. In terms of your question, um, in terms of a third striker, Wiss is my favourite, but if you've already got two Brentford defensive coverage, then I would look at maybe Chris Wood or Morris. That would be my preference there. Manis or Wood long-term? Manis. Ariola versus Kaminsky, who would you play? Probably Ariola. I think both of them concede, but Ariola is more likely to keep a clean sheet. Sorry, that makes no sense. I mean, you could argue he's got more chance for clean sheet because Luton Town are dreadful defensively, but I just think in terms of saves and bonus points, saving penalties, Ariola has all of that over Kaminsky, and um, he's one of the highest scoring goalkeepers for a reason. Robinson over Region. No. I just don't think Fulham keep a clean sheet. Um, thank you very much, Punjabi. I appreciate that. Any goalkeeper worth a minus four? No. Definitely not. What do you think of this uh, free hit team? Ariola, Borro, Region, Udogi, Kudus, Gibbs, White, Son, Alanga, Wissa, Wood. Um, Tony Captain, is it? Okay, going a bit different. Wish me luck. Yeah, the Tony Captaincy is already different enough. And you've also got Wood. Wissa, that's a very differential front three. Gibbs White. I like the team, but I'm not going to lie. I do prefer Elanga over Gibbs White. Um, and, but to be fair, you've got both of them. That's fair enough. So you've got Son. You don't have Madison. Right. So you don't have many. You've got two Spurs players. Well, okay. I'm just completely misreading this. You've got three Spurs players, but you've got two defenders. It's a different way of approaching it. I'm not going to lie. And you've got Ariola, the best goalkeeper who's available for Gimmick 29, but the fixture isn't great, of course. So, uh, yeah, I think if you can somehow get that West Ham clean sheet and Watkins just, you know, either misses out or goes silent, you're laughing probably. But, um, yeah, it's a good squad. I like a lot of the picks, especially Wissa and Alanga. And uh, I hope you do really well and those differentials pay off. Why would someone choose Ariola and at the same time expect Watkins to get some goals and points? Well, it's also, it's going to be a low scoring week in general, if we're being quite honest. We're going to have a lot of clashes between these players. And sometimes you can get that scenario where Watkins scores, but Ariola gets save points and maybe some bonus, or he maybe saves a penalty. Both of them can happen in the same vacuum. But yeah, uh, I understand. I like to differentiate things if possible. That's also a reason why I've currently got a Lang on the bench, because I've got Doughty in the starting 11. But yeah, um, you can sometimes get returns from both players. Thank you very much, Gary. Massively appreciated. Thoughts on going Duran as first bench for Watkins. That's a good shout, but even if Watkins misses out, I don't think that necessarily means Duran will start. Um, Aston Villa could do something a bit like Tielemans as a false nine or just in behind the striker with Diaby playing there. And then you've got Bailey on the right, uh, and then you've got one of Jacob Ramsey on the left or someone else. So... It doesn't necessarily mean Duran will play or start the game. Uh, that would be my opinion on it. I'd rather go for Fana over Duran. And also Morris, Chris Wood, Wissa. There's many strikers I'd rather go for than Duran. Uh, Razvan says, Kudus or Bowen? Bowen for me. Wasif says, Hoyland to Watkins or Solanke to Watkins? Yeah, I mean... From a fixtures perspective as well, it's quite tough. I do prefer Solanke. And if he does double in 34, which depends on Wolves and their FA Cup result. Um, and I think the game's going on soon, by the way. Uh, we'll find out just before the deadline, maybe. Uh, you know, we can maybe get an idea of if Wolves or Coventry are winning and the repercussions that has on Game Week 34. But I have to say, I'd rather sell Hoyland still. Um, you can always buy him back in a few weeks' time. So you could do a bit of a switcheroo. Um, you sell Hoyland this week, you keep Solanke for 30 and 31, and then around 32, you could sell one of Solanke or Watkins to then buy Hoyland. So you could do something like that. Uh, no, Robinson of Region, like I said earlier, not for me. I have covered some of these questions. Uh, I'll try to go for some different ones just for the sake of people watching. Uh, Liam says, hey, they're not free hitting, have 10 players. Would you sell one of Saka, Van Dijk, Gabriel, Palmer for a minus four or just play a 10? I'd probably just play a 10. Um, all of those options you mentioned are good players for the rest of the season. Sack and Gabriel are benchable next week. Um, Palmer is a must-have, I think, for Gemic 30. So yeah, uh, I'd probably just 
stick with the 10. Elanga is in. Who to add? Bailey, Curtis, or Gibbs White? Uh, probably Bailey for me. He's in my starting 11. Um, the others are tempting, especially Curtis, but I think Bailey. Don't have a strong feeling about Morris. I think I'll play five minutes instead on the free hit. Yeah, I get that. Thoughts on Son, Madison, Bowen, Curtis, Elanga. Any changes? Um, well, if we get confirmation of Mbumo starting, that could be a nice spanner in the works. A very big differential. Very unlikely we'll get that information before the deadline, though. Um, other midfielders I consider. Uh, Bailey. Bailey and Douglas Louise are still worth mentioning. But uh, yeah, that's a good midfield five. Douglas Louise or Kudus? Kudus for me. Robinson worth it for the next few weeks? Yeah, I mean, look, it's not a bad shout for the next couple. But for this week specifically, I'm just not sure if he'll pay off. How would you free hit? Um, just go to the transfers page, make the transfers you want to make. And then once you're confirming it, there's an option to play the free hit or not. And... Actually, if you just go for the transfer section anyway, I'm pretty sure you can just activate the free hit regardless. Uh, you might need to make a change if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, it's quite easy to do it. If you just go to the transfer section and make sure to activate the free hit, you're all good. Region or Ruslev? I'd rather go for Region, but I think Ruslev is decent. Um, I just prefer Region for the attacking potential. He always looks threatening, even when he doesn't get a goal contribution. I think he is kind of due a big return. I'm doing Wood and Wissa. Captain, wow. Good luck, mate. And uh, I've seen a few people mention that as a front three. So Wood, Wissa, and potentially maybe Watkins or Tony. I think that's absolutely fine. Gibbs White or Elanga? <laughs> yeah, uh, Elanga once again. And will Watkins start? I think so. Um, why is Barkley being excluded in most squads? Well, Barkley, I think before Double Gaming 28, was the 60th highest scoring midfielder in FPL. Barkley's a quality player, don't get me wrong. But in terms of goals and assists, you can get far better elsewhere and also i think people are a bit cold on luton town after the way they capitulated against bournemouth um Curtis or bailey bailey for me hey dylan not free hitting uh well, i covered that thoughts on a gimmick 35 wild card to maximize the bench boost for gimmick 37 says joe hankin yeah like i mentioned earlier uh, when i was asked the best time to wild card 30 31 or 35 are the best for most people uh so i'm not against that I would rather play the wild card slightly earlier if I'm thinking about it because you have more time for the wild card to pay off and um, you've got plenty of time to set up for a gimmick 37 bench boost anyway. Now that can work both ways, of course, because injuries can happen and it can destabilize your bench boost, but you don't need to play it so close to the bench boost, in my opinion. It can really optimize it, but you've also got other gimmicks to think about like gimmick 32, 33, 34, etc. Uh, my inexperience in FPL has bitten me hard now, says Elliot. No free hit this week. Top 400k, but seven players playing. Ariola, Borro, Doughty, Son, Bowen, Watkins, Tony Captain on his birthday, as well as my birthday. Happy birthday, Elliot. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I wish you the best. Hopefully you get the FPL points you want. That's a good seven, to be fair. Um, I always mention the kind of like pool of players you really want to target for Blank Gaming 29. You've got Son, Bowen, Watkins, Tony. The only one you're potentially missing is Madison, but there are some doubts about him anyway. So, yeah, with seven players, that's absolutely fine. If you can get to eight, that's good, but I'm guessing that would incur a minus four hit. Uh, let me know how you get on, Elliot, in future streams as well. Enjoy your birthday. Omara says, hello, Dylan. What do you think about this free hit team? Leno, Ariola, Doughty, Romero, Robinson, Collins, Botman, Bowen, uh, Kudus, Madison, Son, Douglas, Luis, Tony, Muniz, Wissa. Um, I know it's not that relevant, but Botman is not playing this week, so I would sell him and just have another option just in case. Um, I'm not a big fan of Leno uh, for this week against Tottenham. I think Tottenham will score two or three goals. I'm also looking at your defence, so I'm guessing you'd be starting Collins, Romero and Doughty. I definitely wouldn't start Robinson and Leno together. I think, look, it's up to you. Play the game the way you want and if you're backing Fulham to do something keep a clean sheet then ignore me I'm just giving my opinion but yeah uh, definitely change Botman that's for sure uh Douglas Suiz he's been a great midfielder this season in FPL um I'm not a big fan of him away from home I think he's quite poor on his travels but yeah it's a very good squad overall I'm kind of nitpicking here the front three is very good especially Tony and Wissa I do wish you the best there we're not really sport for choice in the goalkeeper position or the defense so yeah <laughs> do not bench Alanga, don't worry I'm, I'm really looking to find a way to bring him in probably over Morris or Bailey many will regret not playing Alanga potentially he got 9 points earlier this season 
Whereas Wissa, well, I've got three Brentford players already. Um, if I were to bring Wissa in, it would require selling one of Fleck in or Region, which isn't a bad thing, really. It's not like the end of the world. But um, I saw you're now on Reddit. I saw a comment of yours on a double gimmick post by chance. Yeah, um, kind of branching out as well. Um, I've always wanted to kind of use Reddit as well to promote my content and also engage with the community. So yeah, it's just a, another link. I might even add it actually to my description. Thank you for reminding me. Start two, Morris, Bailey, Alanga. I'm currently going for Morris and Bailey, but I'm not going to lie. I think Alanga has to come in there. Uh, I'm looking at it now. Um, I'm going to say Morris and Alanga for, for the time being, but that could certainly change. What do you think of a double up of Region and Ruslev? Well, it's a different type of double up, but ultimately a lot of people will be going for Flecken and Region anyway. But Ruslev is a decent shout this week, so I'm not against that, of course. I still think Brentford have the best chance of a clean sheet this week. They won 3-0 in the reverse fixture against Burnley earlier in the season. Um, Elanga or Douglas Louise? Elanga. Uh, I did cover your question earlier, mate. I only have eight players of a game. Should I wildcard? Wait, did I say eight? I only have four players of a game. Yeah, um... I probably would. It's not an ideal time to wildcard, but be sure to check out my wildcard team video. I think that could really help you out. And um, you could even add some more Blank Gimmick 29 players and go for a Doughty over Gusto or Bradley, who I talk about in that video. And there's also many more to consider, like Branthwaite, for the long term. Uh, start two, I'd probably go for Alanga and Morris there. Yeah, I think Region will start. Otherwise, I wouldn't have him, mate. Would you consider Awani? Um, no. I think Wood will start the game. I think Awani will be on the bench. If Awani is injured, as someone mentioned earlier, then he might not even be in the squad at all. But I personally think Chris Wood will start. Bailey or Douglas Louise? Uh, Bailey. Is Paqueta fit? Yes, he is fit. Um, love your streams. You're going for hours. A true machine. Thank you, Henning. Yeah, we're going up until the deadline and maybe a bit beyond that, depending on if people are still here. Uh, yeah, there's still one hour, 28 minutes to go. So uh, be sure to lock in your teams. But uh, there's no rush just yet. Fionki says Son, Madison, Boeing, Kudus, Alanga. Unsure about the double West Ham midfield. Would you swap anyone for Bailey? And if so, who? Uh, probably Kudus, but he did score a brace on Thursday, so that might make you a bit uneasy. But uh, yeah, I'd rather keep Bowen. Adnan says, if Mbumo starts, is it risky to remove Flecken and Region since they're the only team who could eventually get a clean sheet? I agree with you that Brentford are the most likely to keep a clean sheet, but... In terms of percentages, they're not that much more likely than a Spurs or a, or any other team, really. I think all of them have a similar number or a similar proportion and percentage of a clean sheet chance. So it's not the end of the world, actually. And it's a differential. Um, some other people will be going for Wissa and Tony up front, and that could also pay off. So there's different ways to skin a cat. And honestly, I wouldn't be that against it, selling one of Flecken or Region. Um... Let's see what else we have. So Oamara says, do Watkins to Manise on free hit or just keep Watkins? I'd keep Watkins. Is seven players enough? Yes, assuming that the quality of players is high. So if you've got seven players and that includes uh, Taylor from Burnley and I don't know, you've got, let's say, Kabore or Mengi, that's not great, to be honest. But if you've got seven players and you've got most of the key options, that's fine. Start two, Morris, Bailey, Alanga. I think I just covered that. Um, yeah. Hamid, uh, hopefully I haven't butchered your name. Do I start Morris, Kudus or Bailey? Yeah, quite a lot of similar questions actually, but out of those three, if I had to pick one, I'm currently going for Bailey. Um, I think Kudus would be bottom of that list, but there's really fine margins, I think, with a lot of these players. I hope that when it comes to the end of Gimmick 29, we're not there thinking, oh, I should have started this player instead, or I should have picked this player when it was a 50-50 call. Patrick says, hi Dylan, free hit team is Flecken, Region, Borro, uh, Doughty, Bowen, Son, Madison, Langer, Kudus, Watkins, Tony, and a pun on Wood. Can't decide on Kudus or Bailey. Yeah, I mean, Bailey does have the disadvantage of playing away from home, but I do prefer Bailey over Kudus. Just about, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I, I think I'd go for Bailey, but Kudus is a good shout, and... Um, just off the back of your gut on that one. I think that's a 50-50 call. Not free hit. Should I take a minus 8 to field 11? I don't think you need to. Just take a minus 4 for 10 or free transfer for 9 and you're good. You don't need a full 11. Um, Amif says thoughts. Um, it's a good team. 
yeah, I'm, I do like it. Romero and Pedro Porro double up. Looks good. I'm not sure who your third defender is, though. I'm guessing that's your non-free hit team and you've got two defenders. That's fine. Bailey Bowen, Sonalanga, Tony Morris, Wissop. You're pretty well set up, actually. Um, actually, yeah, that is a free hit team because you've got Taylor and Sufa on the bench. So, yeah, let me know who your third defender is, but it looks good. I do like it. I'm seeing a lot of love for Langer, by the way, more than I expected. Madison posted a match promo pic about himself on Insta. Yeah, I have seen a few rare examples of a player posting such a picture and they're not in the squad, but it's very rare. Um, and sometimes they're on the bench. They don't, you know, start the game. But yeah, I personally think Madison will play. That's why he's in my team. Uh, thank you, Shabam. Uh, hi, Dylan. Great to be back in the stream. Should I take another hit minus eight for Gibbs, White, Alanga or a Villa triple up with Bailey? Um, out of all those options, I think Alanga or Bailey are the best options to take a hit for, but you don't need to. I think you're absolutely fine taking a minus four hit, uh, depending on the number of players you have, of course, but you don't need to take a minus eight. Thank you, Elliot. Um, I'm just hoping for the best, to be honest, bringing in Madison for a minus four hit. So I hope he blanks and Borro and Son cover all the points in that Spurs game. Is a Madison return certain? I wouldn't say certain, but very likely. He hasn't blanked away from home this season. At Craven Cottage in the Premier League, he hasn't blanked during his time at Leicester. So I think the chance of him returning are probably higher than anybody else this week, with the exception of Son. Uh, and that's why he is my vice captain. Thank you, K-Man Corner. Love your channel, mate. Don't watch the others. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, K-Man. There is a lot of content out there, not just in FPL. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube. Uh, so be sure to broaden your horizons. SOCLH says, Hey, Dylan, two questions. One, Manis or Wood for the next two free game weeks? I'd go for Manis. Uh, two, Trippier to Regan for a minus eight this week. Trippier to Gusto for a minus four next week. Or do both moves and have both in gimmick 30. I won't wildcard soon. Um... If I'm being honest, I just do Trippier to Gusto next week. I don't think you need Region for a hit this week. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, if Region keeps a clean sheet this week, you'd probably already justify the hit. And Brentford have good fixtures from Gimmick 32 until the end of the season. But I think Gusto for a minus four is more than enough. Uh, so thank you to those that are still tuning in. Over 200 people watching. Let's get this stream to over 200 likes. Thank you to those that send in super chats like Bullet FMV. All the patrons and channel members, it's massively appreciated. And um, yeah, also be sure to check out the links in the description below for Draft Pound, which I showed you earlier. Also the Discord server, that's a great community there. It's always a pleasure talking to all of you on that platform. My Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM. You can get all the latest FPL and UCL Fantasy updates, the FPL League, and also Spotify and Amazon Music. All of my content is available in podcast format so be sure to check that out leave a five star review and follow me on those platforms you can also find me on reddit nowadays uh, i am posting there as well um so yeah thank you to those that have liked the stream already massively appreciated ethan says high five Ariola, region cash bowen watkins with two free transfers which moves would you make gimmick 31 wildcard i'm thinking foden saka hallen solanke to son madison tony and wissa extra minus four for Bodro. Um, Oh, okay, you got two free transfers. That's a blessing there. Um, so you're buying Son, Madison, Tony, and Wissa. So that's a minus eight. I don't think you need to take an extra minus four for Bodero. I think the answer would be no. Um, even a minus eight, you could even maybe reconsider and think, I could just take a minus four. Um, but yeah, that's that's fine. I, I think the transfers you're making are good. Of course, when you sell players of Foden, Saka, Hallen, and Solanke's quality, that could come back to bite you in future weeks. But for the time being... But this week specifically looks great, and you are wild cutting in 31. So overall, I'd say yes. That all looks absolutely fine. I'd probably go ahead and do it. Um, maybe reconsider, for example, Solanke out for one of Whistle or Tony. I think maybe Solanke to Whistle you could hold off on. Take a minus four hit, bring in Tony, Madison, Son, for a minus four hit, and you're good to go. Who do I start, Ross Barkley or who? Lee? Is that Leon Bailey? Be sure to let me know there. I do want to answer that. Where's Toffolo? Not here. Um, don't think he's a particularly great FPL asset. The same goes for any Forest defender. I've currently got Murillo, but don't really back any of them. Whistle hardly plays 90 minutes, so um, but he does a good job in goal. What a difficult decision. Yeah, he's a risky punt, I think. Um, there is a chance Malpai comes in. It would be harsh on Wissa, who has scored in three consecutive games, and he scored against Burnley earlier in the season, but 
yeah, I think Whistle will start, but his minutes won't be that nailed on like a Tony would. And that's why most people are going for Tony instead. Thoughts on Werner? Uh, look, it could be a nice differential. It, it really could. Uh, and I've said that a lot today, but I'd actually rather go for Brennan Johnson in the midfield. And of course, you've got Pedro Porro, Odogi, uh, Romero in the back line. You've got Madison and Son in the midfield. So for me, there isn't a space for Werner in the free hit or even with our normal teams in most cases. Um, oh, third defender's doubt, he says, I mean, fair enough. Yeah, you're pretty well set up. Choose one, by the way, Kulizewski or Madison? Madison. It's Tony birthday. It's Tony's birthday today. Uh, as I have seven players playing, should I captain him over Son? I'd only captain him, I always say this, if you actually think he's going to score more points than Son, um, or if you've got a good feeling about him. Um, I personally prefer Son and Madison over Tony, but the margins are quite fine. And that is, of course, assuming Madison will start the game. And there is a slight doubt about that going up, you know, along in the Twitter sphere. But yeah, um, I personally prefer Son. But look, it's a week to maybe be differential, especially when so many free hits are quite similar. Obviously, you've got a seven players playing. Yeah, I think it's a close call, but I do prefer Son. No rush just yet is too strong. I missed deadline twice in the last four game weeks, uh, not setting up correctly 11 and captain messing about for... Oh, missing about 35 points after taking twice a minus four. I need to improve in this. When I first started FPL, I played casually. I played for fun. I missed countless deadlines. I took multiple hits. I think by December in one season, I must have taken over 100 points worth of hits. I somehow still finished in a good position, I think in 68k or something. But who knows where I could have finished if I actually took it serious from the beginning. Phobia Isaac TV says, Hi Dylan, Mbuma will be in the squad versus Burnley. Uh, he did post something which indicate that he will be in the squad. Um, it's looking quite promising, but he might be on the bench. It's quite likely he will be after being out for so long. For him to be in the starting 11 would be a surprise. If we get that leak before the deadline, I think Mbumo is a massive differential who could really pay off. But unless we get that confirmation from a reliable source, I wouldn't buy him just yet. Um, is it true? Uh, oh, yes, that was the other question. Elanga or Chris Wood? Uh, Elanga for me. Who's the best captain besides Son? I'd say one of Madison or Tony. Uh, one single Burnley goal will ruin us all. Uh, Datra Fafana goal incoming. Hopefully not. And uh, Burnley have struggled to score goals. Before the West Ham game, they were struggling to score in multiple matches. I'm hoping that's the case again. Even if I only go for one Brentford defender, I still hope they keep a clean sheet, even though it might go against me if I were to do that change. Start Elanga or Morris. Um, I'm currently going for Morris, but I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going to go for Elanga. Um, so I'm going to go for Elanga and put a poll out to help you um, and a lot of people out with this kind of benching dilemma. So who would you start? Or actually, in my case, maybe who would you bench? I'm going to include Bailey in this scenario too. So we're going to put Bailey, Elanga, and Morris. All right. Get back to your questions in just a second. Just setting up this poll. Uh, be sure to vote and uh, let me know your thoughts in the live chat too. Richarlison or Madison? Madison. Start Morris or Gibbs White, says Vuvu. Morris. Uh, moaning. Whoa, okay. Uh, hello, mate. Minus eight to get Madison and a doggy in currently. Worth a minus 12 to get Bailey or Alanga in. I don't think you need to take a minus 12. Uh, if I'm being honest, I'm going to stop saying that because some people are probably pissed off about that. Um, I think a minus A is more than enough. You don't need to take an extra hit. Uh, thank you, Shivam. Uh, Dr. Dar says, Hey, Dylan, I'm not on free hit. I have Ariola, Emerson, Powell, Doughty, Son, Madison, Watkins, Morris, and sold Garnacho to Kulizewski. Take a punt for two weeks. I'm a wild card in 31. Thoughts? You're well set up. It almost looks like a free hit team. Um, just kind of nitpicking here. You don't have Tony or Wissa. I think that could be something you're missing out on this week, but you're covering most of the key options for me. Um, you're well set up. You should, maybe not should, but you are in a good position to get a green arrow, I think, despite not free hitting. Start Morris or Gibbs White? Uh, Morris, mate. Badge Mo says, Ariola, Doughty, Taylor, Son, Madison, Watkins, or free hit. So you've got three, four, five, six. Uh... You've got six players, of course. Watkins is a slight doubt. Um, even Madison, there's a few kind of uh, nerves around him. Taylor isn't a good option. I think it can go both ways, right? So if you've got a free transfer available now, you could just buy in a Tony or Wissa, and that's fair. You could even take a minus four hit, and you're good to go. Um, 
yeah, so if you've still got a free transfer available, I'd probably stick to, you know, making a normal move, so to speak, and saving the free hit. But if that's all you can, you know, get up to, yeah, I would consider the free hit. So it all depends on that. Let me know how many transfers you have available and all of that jazz. Um, but yeah, I think that does influence whether you should or not. Bench one, says Norbert. Uh, Gibbs White, Doug Sweeze or Morris? Doug Sweeze. Quite close, though, between him and Gibbs White. Elliot Enright says, should I bring in Madison for a minus four hit? I'm opting against it as I already have a Spurs double up on Son and Borro. Yeah, look, I like Madison a lot this week. I believe he will start. And if he does, great chance of return. Depends you're selling. If it's one of Sack or Foden and you're not wild cutting fairly soon, I probably would just hold off. But if you can sell a so-called, you know, undesirable pick and uh, the Madison move can also help you in game 30, then I take the hit. Uh, Amif says, I watch a lot of the other guys, but gotta say your channel for FPL and UCL are top notch, mate. Thank you very much. It means a lot. And um, yeah, FPL, UCL, Fantasy, I'm always here. That's the plan. I am going on holiday soon again, but I am trying to get all the content, the normal ones, out as possible. But thank you for that. Andrew Barton says, heard that Broya must start. The remaining fixtures of Fulham need to pay a 4 million clause to Chelsea. I mean, every single game, though, and Manis is in great form. It'd be very harsh, in my opinion, to bench him. But, yeah, that, that's a good point that you raised there and something to consider, especially for my wildcard team where I included Manis, and that's something to maybe remove or change there. Um, yeah, that's covered. Ian Ali says, thoughts, Vicario, Borro, Murillo, Collins, Bailey, Bowen, Son, Douglas Weiss, Wissert, Tony, Watkins... Yeah, um, some differential picks in there, that's for sure. Murillo has 2% ownership. Vicario isn't going to be sought out after or sought after um, by many free hitters this week. Collins is a differential. I do prefer Regon and Ruslev over Collins, but that's fine. Um, you've gone for a double up in the Aston Villa midfield too, which is interesting. I really like your front three. It's arguably the best front three this week uh, in isolation. Instead of Morris, I have Fafana. Should I change? I personally prefer Morris. He's also on penalties, but Fafana is in decent form recently, so it's not a bad shout. If you have a good feeling about him, trust your instincts and your gut. Just because you're different to others, it doesn't mean you're in the wrong path. Sometimes it's the right thing to do, but I personally do prefer Morris. Uh, thank you, Batra. Much appreciated. Nabil says, pick three starters from uh, Doughty, Ruslev, Cash, William, Sufal. Um, Ruslev, Doughty, and... Probably Williams, actually. Wissa and Tony and Watkins up front. Yep, great front three. I've got nothing really to um, go against there, James. Really good. Dylan is a minus eight feasible. Foden to Madison, Solanke to Tony, Saka to Alanga. I mean, yeah, it's feasible. I'm just not a big fan of taking massive hits this week. Um, some people even ask me about minus 12s and above. I think that's way too much. Yeah, look, that's fine. And also, Madison's a good option next week. Tony's a season keeper, arguably, although no doubles there for Brentford. Elanga's a good option with the fixtures in mind. I personally would probably avoid the Elanga move with future fixtures in mind there, um, Punjabi. If you aren't wildcarding in 30 or 31, I probably would just stick with a minus four hit and just stick with Madison and Tony. Uh, Douglas or Elanga, says Arthur. Elanga. I do wonder if Wiss is the better option over Tony. Based on current form, he is. Um, I personally think Tony will outscore him this week, though. He's on penalties. And with Wissa, he's done very well recently, but he's only getting five or six pointers. It's not like he's getting bonus points and just being an absolutely amazing FPL option. So I just think if Tony scores, and he's more likely to on paper than um, Wissa, he's much more likely to get bonus points, too. Yeah, Wissa's three in the last three. Tony hasn't scored in four. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, but... Once again, you know, these droughts and stuff, these maybe consecutive streaks, they end at some point and things change in football. So I understand what you're saying there. Doughty injured says hype. I'm not sure where you got that from, but be sure to let me know. Uh, Paqueta is a super differential. Yeah, that is true. Bench Alango or Morris. I'm currently going for uh, Morris in my starting 11, but um, interesting result in the poll, actually. Um, most people are saying Bailey is the one to bench. Um, but it's quite close. All of them are quite similar in terms of votes. Kudus or Douglas Louise? Probably Kudus. 
Been playing FPL for 12 years, never knew you could have players in their away kits. It's a Chrome extension, that's why. You can't have it without the Chrome extension. Uh, it's quite easy to get um, on Brave, Google Chrome, and these sorts of browsers. I don't think you can do it on Safari, though. What about Chong? He's in good form, but I'm not really too keen. The only Luton Town players I'd suggest or recommend are Doughty and Morris. Richard says, should I take a minus four just to ensure I have a bench option? Currently have 11 players, including Elanga and Watkins. I don't think you need to. Because even if you are down to 10 players, you've got a good chance of a green arrow, in my opinion. So you don't need to. By taking the minus four hit, you reduce your chances of getting that green arrow. And unless you are buying in a player who's going to be useful to you in gaming 30 and beyond, I don't think the hit necessarily pays off. What is the best for this game week? Free hit or wild card? Free hit in most cases, I think. Wissa or Morris, says Marco. Uh, in isolation, Wissa. If I had that Brentford slot available, I'd be going for Wissa. But because I'm going for Flecken, Region, and Tony, I'm going for Morris. Chris Wood or Elanga? Elanga. Uh, Josh says, Hi Dylan, loving the channel, mate. Sorry if you've answered already, but how come Morris instead of Awani? The thing is with Awani... I'm not sure if he's injured. I'm, I have to double check that, by the way. I'll do that after answering your question. But I think Chris Wood will start. He also scored a brace in the reverse fixture against Luton Town earlier this season. And Alwini's had a lot of injury problems recently. And uh, I also look at Nottingham Forest. My favourite attacker is Alanga for this week. I think he's got the highest ceiling. And with Morris, he's on penalties in home matches. I'll try to get the start up right now, actually. I've made a note of it. I think he scored in four consecutive games at Kenilworth Road. Yeah, and in those four games, 26 points for Morris, and he's averaging 6.5 points in that four-game spell. Obviously, a very small sample size, and Nottingham Forest are much better defensively under their new manager, but I still think that could be a very high-scoring game, and uh, the only reason I'm going for Doughty is for the attacking potential that he possesses. Will Richarlison start? Uh, I don't think so, but there is a chance. There certainly is. Bailey or Kudus? Bailey for me. Just seen a Sky Sports interview where Doughty has a massive ice pack on his ankle. Well, thank you for that, Goldhead. I'll try to keep an eye out for that. And it's something to certainly think about. Um, and Doughty is not a great option in terms of clean sheet chances this week anyway. It's really for the attacking potential. But the thing I wanted to check is the Awani thing. So let me uh, quickly look on Twitter and see if I can find anything. Be sure to drop a like if you haven't already, especially if I've answered your question or helped you in any way. I'm going to be checking some Awani updates. If you see anything, by the way, um, FPL related, any kind of important news, be sure to drop a link in the live chat. It's massively appreciated. Um, it also, we can go for it together and um, discuss this. Um, yeah, I saw a Nottingham Forest fan on Twitter mentioned that uh, our knee, there's a rumor that he's injured and he expects Wood to start. But yeah, I don't know where the rumor's coming from. That's what I want to see, the origin and the source of that Awani injury. Either way, I'm not considering Awani. I think Chris Wood is more likely to be in my team. I think he's going to start, but yeah. Um, interesting one indeed. Yeah, I can't see the source of that news. Of course, someone mentioned earlier about the Madison thing. He posted on his story. It looks like he's going to be playing. So good stuff there. Yeah, I'll probably go back to that. But like I said, it's massively appreciated if you do leave links in the live chat, just so it speeds up the uh, the process. Yeah, this is a free hit team. Um, I'm taking a minus eight to get to 11 players this week, bringing in Son, Madison and Tony. They're three great players you're bringing in, so I'm not really against that. Uh, you don't need 11 players, though. You don't need 11 necessarily. You could just take a minus four, settle with 10. But because the players you're bringing in are so good for this week on paper, I think you get away with it. I wonder if Chris Wood is flying under the radar. Slightly. Um, in away matches, he's scored in one game, but he scored a hat-trick. That was against Newcastle. In every other game, he's blanked on the travels. Um, and of course, he did get 13 points against Luton Town in the other game earlier this season. He is an underrated pick, I think. I have seven players. Should I take a minus 12? You don't need to take a minus 12. A, a minus 12... I think if you take a minus 12 this week, you're probably going to get a red arrow. That's the way I see it. He doesn't have in the no leaks or news, but I've seen the tweet could be true. Uh, fair enough, Goldhead. Opinions on Wissa. If you've got that free Brentford slot available, I like that as a differential. Great form. 
uh, three consecutive games where he scored him. Now, the ceiling isn't that high for Wissar, but he did get two bonus points against Burnley in the other game earlier this season. And yeah, I think going for Wissar and Tony does cover most of Brentford's goals for this game week. Uh, Dr. Dar says, I have playing nine. Should I sell Solanke to Tony for a minus four? Yeah, of course. You can think of it that way, where you're selling players you blanked this week, you're bringing in a player features. It's technically a minus two, not a minus four. I get that. But also for gimmick 30 and 31, maybe even 32, you'd probably rather have Solanke there than Tony. And Tony has blanked in four consecutive games. So there's a few things to weigh up. But ultimately, yeah, I'm not against a minus four for Tony. Is it unwise to have West Ham and Villa defenders? There's not much choice uh, this week for defenders and goalkeepers, so it's not the worst thing in the world. I personally think both West Ham and Aston Villa will score. It's just a tricky game to call. It could go either way. Aston Villa are the better team, but they're away from home, and West Ham on the day can beat anybody, especially in Aston Villa. So it goes both ways there. Uh, Man United or Liverpool tomorrow? I think Liverpool will win. They are the better team, but in the FA Cup, upsets can happen and football is unpredictable. Uh, Joey Samp says, already got Son, Bowen, Tony Watkins, Morris, Douglas, Luis. You're fine. Not free hitting, worth holding Saka or losing value in him. The thing is, if you're not wildcarding anytime soon, then I'd rather keep Saka. If you're wildcarding in 31, for example, I wouldn't be against selling Saka now for a two gimmick punt. Um, so, for example, you can go to Madison. And then you can buy Saka back on the wildcard. So if you could do something like that, then yeah, I'd sell Saka. Otherwise, he's an easy hold. It all depends on when you're wildcarding. Opinions on Wissa have covered. Minus eight for Madison and one of Son, Tony, uh, Watkins, Bowen. I think those are the five best options this week. You could even argue an Elanga or a, maybe a Wissa. Chris Wood is also a differential punt, but... Yeah, I think Son, Madison, Tony, and Watkins are the best options this week. Thoughts on the UCL draw? Um, it's the worst draw that Arsenal and Man City could have got, really. Um, you've got to cover, or you've got to beat the best teams, really, to get to the final. And look, that's the Champions League and any competition. You've got to be the best and beat the best. But yeah, you look at the other side of the draw, and one of PSG, Dortmund, Atletico, Barcelona are going to reach the final. You could argue all four of them are worse than the other teams on the other side of the draw, but that's the way the Champions League can be sometimes. Um, I think Arsenal can beat Bayern, but in terms of European pedigree, the experience, all of that, and also the individual quality Bayern possess, I do think it's a level playing field, and Bayern are the slight favourites for me. I think they are, despite Arsenal being the better team right now, I think Bayern would be the favourites, um, but Arsenal certainly can get the job done. If you're asking me, I think Arsenal reached the semi-finals but lose to one of Real Madrid or City. Let's wait and see how that pans out. Morris or Chris Wood, Cisphobia. Um, That's really close, but... Yeah, I'm currently going for Morris. Just about. Yeah, Brandon Boomer is back. I'm not sure if he's starting, though. Um, That's obviously the key thing to differentiate, but if he's starting, he's a good option. Manis or Wood or roll the transfer, says Salman. But this week, I prefer Chris Wood. Um, but yeah, in your case, just roll the transfer play of 10. I think that's absolutely fine. What about Iwobi? Yeah, he's been popping up with some important goals recently. Some late winners, equalizers, but I don't think I'd go for him. Not this week. Should I bring Bowen, Madison, Bailey for a minus four or avoid a minus four? I have eight players playing currently. Um, you don't need to bring all of them in my opinion, but Madison's my favourite. Then it's probably Bowen. So yeah, you've got eight playing currently. You can just stick with normal transfers and get to 10. Uh, thank you, Punjabi. As he says, be sure to smash the like button. It costs nothing and it helps us out. We are 56 likes away from 200 and we've got just over an hour left until the deadline. We've been streaming for one hour and a half already. I mean, time flies, doesn't it? It really does. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the stream as much as I am. And be sure to lock in your teams and get everything sorted. Geotip says Captain Bowen or Madison. Madison's my preference. Fleckin or Vicario. If you've got that free spur slot available, I'd go for Vicario. The reason why I'm not going for the Italian is because you've got Romero, Badoggi, and Pedro Porto in the back line. You've got Madison and Son in the midfield. I'd rather go for those players instead. But if you're asking me in isolation, I'd rather go for Vicario, just about. 
Is Paltar a Stein this week? I think so. But if you just want a nailed on Aston Villa defender, go for Konsa. He didn't play in the Europa Conference League due to suspension. He's just come back from injury. He's playing 90 minutes week in, week out. He's as nailed as you can get from that Villa defence. I'd go for Konsa if you're able to. But yeah, I think Pal Torres will start. James uh, says, pick two to buy out of Kudus, Douglas Ruiz and Bailey. Probably Bailey and Kudus. Now, Douglas Ruiz, if the game was at home, I'd definitely pick Luiz. He'd be my starting 11, no doubts about it. But he's averaging less than three points per game away from home. Um, Organ says, I have Tony Bowen, Son, Watkins. Do I need to bring in Madison for a minus 12? No. I really like Madison this week, but a minus 12 is really excessive. Even a minus 8, I think, is pushing it. In my opinion, a minus 12, I wouldn't say guarantees, but it makes it very likely that you're going to get a red arrow this week. The thing with Madison that kind of counteracts that is that he's a good option for gimmick 30 against Luton Town at home on top of it. So Madison will pay off the hit eventually, uh, but it also depends who you sell. So there's a lot to consider there, but a minus 12 this week, I'm not really a, a fan of it. Wissa or Morris? Um, in isolation, Wissa. Gary says, loving the last minute panic buying. Plan ahead by watching more FBL Dylan and be ahead of your rivals. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate it. Uh, of course, though, there are some things that are wrong. Uh, but FPL and football is completely unpredictable. How does it work with transfers before and after free hit? So if you make transfers and then you activate the free hit, all transfers, all hits will be vanquished. They will be uh, removed. And uh, yeah, the transfer won't go ahead. Uh, going into the next week. In terms of making transfers after the free hit, that's all part of your free hit squad. Until the deadline passes, your team is locked in, and then your team reverts back to how your squad was before you activate the free hit, and then you can start to make tra transfers for the next week for Gaming 30. That's the way it works. By selling Solanke for Tony, I'm going to lose 0.2 million. Um, I'm not really that fussed about losing value. You know, unless you're really planning on getting Haaland, Salah, Son, Saka, Foden and really going heavy on the midfield and forward line. Yeah, I wouldn't be too bothered about 0.2 million, so to speak. But Solanke to Tony for a hit, it's tricky because you have, to, you have to think about 30, 31 and 32 as well. And I think Solanke is better than Tony in that time frame. So very tricky. Can Simeone finally lift it? Yeah, he can. And Simeone is one of the best managers in the world. Um, what he's done with Atletico is unbelievable. It really is. But I still think, in my opinion, whoever wins out of Man City, Real Madrid, Bayern, Arsenal are the favourites to win the Champions League. So whoever reaches the final would be the favourite. Now, I think maybe with Arsenal it's a bit less so because they haven't won the Champions League yet and they don't have the experience of the other three. So maybe it's less relevant with them. Um, but yeah, Simeone can certainly lift it. But in my opinion, if he faces Madrid or City in the final, I think they're going to lift it for sure. Can't believe Kane meeting Arsenal again. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of, it seems uh, written in the stars, doesn't it? Your thoughts on Douglas Suiz, Dylan? Great at Villa Park. A bit average, I'd say, away from home. Averages less than three points per game. He can still do something. And he got 15 points against West Ham earlier in the season. But it's an away game this time around. Um, Larry says, I have seven players. Um, should I take a minus four to get to nine players and save a free hit? Yeah, minus four for nine is fine. Um, and looking at your squad, yeah, you can add a Tony and a, and a Madison there for a minus four. And you've got nine players. That's fine. Bilal says, can't decide between Bailey, Paqueta or Kudus if Watkins doesn't play. Bailey's my favorite of the three. Then it'd be Kudus and Paqueta would be last. If Mbuma starts, it's more tempted to captain Tony than Son. Yeah, uh, I think Mbuma would help Tony. That's a good point you make. I'd be tempted to buy Mbuma, to be honest. If Mbuma definitely starts, I'd actually be very tempted. Uh, Gibbs White or Ilanga? Um, Ilanga. I've covered this a few times today. I I'd rather go for Ilanga. Wissa or Tony? Tony. Uh, Martin says, Hi Dylan, I've decided to go with seven players and minus eight. Yeah, it's, it's tricky, I think. The threshold is very subjective, right? Um, I would just about say yes if the seven players include the likes of Son, Madison, Tony, Watkins. If you're missing one of those players and you're also missing the likes of Bowen, I'd maybe consider using the free hit because you're already eight points up on your non-free hit team and you gain an extra four players. So I think you do gain quite a lot from the free hit, actually. That's just my opinion. 
Um, Gassami says, can you rank these players? I'm not free hitting. Um, it's probably Bailey first, Elanga second. I think it's the way you ordered it, actually. Brennan Johnson third, Gibbs White fourth. Hi, Dylan. What are your weekend plans? Um, just chilling, really. Um, yeah, I probably might watch some games, um, you know, with some friends and stuff like that. But yeah, not, not nothing special, I'd say. Uh, Dylan, try Brennan Johnson. It's just I prefer Madison and, and Son. I, I really back them. Will Ilanga play? Yes, I think so. Um, Nuno Espirito Santo spoke about this after the Brighton game, and he spoke about trying to um, make the central areas compact, and that's why the likes of Ilanga, Hudson-Odoi were benched. So he had a clear plan. I mean, Brighton really undid them through a set piece, so you could argue that it wasn't really too shabby. You know, the plan was quite decent. Um, but I think Alanga will play, certainly, against Luton Town. Their weaknesses are on the wing-backs. You know, they really can see so many chances on the left and right. I think it makes a lot of sense to play Alanga. Uh, Wolves are playing now. Yes, exactly. And that result has an impact on Gemic 34. So if Coventry beat Wolves, Bournemouth are very likely to double in Gemic 34. Um, so if, for example, before the deadline, we see that Coventry are 2-0 up or something, or even more, you know that would maybe also play a part in our future transfer plans, especially for non-free hitters. So there's a lot to consider, of course, in FPL over the last portion of the season. Um, Dylan, thoughts on front free Worcester, Tony and Watkins? I think that's the best front free on paper, and I believe Watkins will start. Romero or Bodero? I prefer Bodero simply for the attacking potential, and uh, the bonus points I think is quite similar between the two. I think they both average 3.9 points per game. Although Borro might have gone up to four. But yeah, I personally prefer Borro. Just about. Uh, Fool says, should I take a minus four to bring in Madison and Tony? Or a minus eight to bring in Bone as well? Minus four for me. I don't think you need the minus eight. If Richarlison starts, Son's captaincy choice will be less attractive. Yeah, slightly. But Son has produced some massive returns with Richarlison in the side. And um, yeah, I personally think Son can still haul quite well with Richarlison and without. Yeah, I think Elanga starts. What to do with Emerson? If it's that, if that's Emerson Palmieri, yeah, I'm not even sure if he does play this weekend. It's probably going to be Creswell. Um, tricky one, but I probably would look to replace him or at least buy another defender and drop Emerson to the bench, depending on if you're free hitting or not. If you're free hitting, I'd get rid of him. Can you rank these players? Uh, I've covered them already, mate. It's the exact order you mentioned them in. Why Morris over Chris Wood? Home advantage, being on penalties. Um, Morris has returned four consecutive games. There's also the Awani factor, although there are rumours that he's injured. I'm not sure how reliable that is. How does it work with transfers before and after? I've covered that, mate. Basically, all transfers that you make before the free hit will be wiped out. They won't go through, and the hits will also be removed. Yeah, I think Madison will start. Bailey or Elanga? I'm currently going for Bailey. Elanga over Mbuma as well. Yes, and that's mainly because Mbuma has just come back from injury. If Mbuma was back a week or two earlier, I probably would say Mbuma. Thank you, Elliot. I'm hoping for some birthday luck with seven players, Tony captain, and I've decided not to take a minus four hit for Madison. Good luck, Elliot. Hopefully you enjoy the football. Your thoughts on Moniz? Any news that you'll start? I like Moniz in terms of Fulham assets. There is a slight concern with him and there's now back from injury, but I still think Moniz will start in Gimmick 29. Kudus or Alanga? Elanga. Bailey or Kudus? Bailey. Andy N says, Hi Dylan, would you bench Morris or Bailey? I would bench Morris. But very close though. Very close. I'm very I'm really struggling, I think, with this um with this benching dilemma. I think it's between those three. Elanga, um, Bailey and Morris. And now Elanga's actually gone up to the top option to bench. Um it's very close. One of the closest polls I've seen in quite some time. So, yeah, I'm going to be looking on Twitter, seeing if I can find anything. Uh, Ethan says, hey, Dylan, thoughts on a doggy versus Borro? Uh I'm 0.1 million short of going straight to Salah next week, so thoughts on anyone 5.7 million or cheaper? I prefer Borro, but a dog is a decent alternative, and if it helps you buy Salah, then a doggy or Romero over Borro is fine. But if money is no issue, I'd go for the Spaniard. Is it a bad idea to play Brendan Johnson, Madison and Son? I want to say it's a bad idea, uh, but I think a double up is enough, and I would want one Spurs defender. 
Um, and also, when you've got win backs like Bodro with that attacking potential, it's not that bad. That is my front three, says I am. Will Elanga start? Yes, I think so. Start two. Uh, Dawn, I have covered your question, mate. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, Morris and Bailey is what I'm currently going for, but that might change. Slanky really did me bad with that penalty miss. Well, he got eight points in the end, though. He got those two bonus points in the second game. He salvaged something. And look, Erling Haaland back in game week 25, he missed three or four big chances and he got 10 points in the end. So it's not a massive difference. I don't think it's... I've had worse triple captains. I triple captain Mane in a double game week. He came off injured in 30, 40 minutes after the first game. And Salah, my vice triple captain, ended up getting 16 points as a base score. So these things happen. Watkins will start. I think so. Sell Palmer for a Langer minus four. Um, I am still don't know if I'd do that though. If you're really confident about Alanga, you know, returning this week and you're really bullish on it, then go for it. But I don't think you need to. Dogish says wildcard on 31. Who to sell this week? Foden or Saka? Um, I'd rather go for Foden in gaming 30 over Saka. So my answer will be selling Saka. Kudus or Bailey? Bailey. 3-5-2, uh, but I've benched Dilemma. Elanga or Wissa? I prefer Elanga just about over Wissa. Um, yeah, I'd probably bench Wissa from those three, but that's probably a disaster waiting to happen. Ideally, you start all three of them. Why Bailey instead of Luis? Uh, Bailey is slightly better away from home. I think Douglas Luiz is just not really appealing in away matches. And look, he can return. If it's a low-scoring game and Luiz gets an assist or goal, he's very likely to get bonus points. But yeah, the thing with Luiz, though, you're really relying on penalties this week. If it's at Villa Park, I'd 100% go for Luis. The players that are missing from your team is Flecky and Reggio, Madison, Bailey and Morris. Yeah, uh, it could become uh, Elanga, by the way. But yeah, I've got to pray that they don't return and I hold on to my eighth green arrow in a row and top 400k. Yeah, certainly possible. Um, you know, I think Madison's probably your biggest worry. I'm going with Chris Wood, says Anil. Good luck. Um, Dr. Dar says captaincy ranking. Son, Madison, Watkins, Tony or Douglas Ruiz. Um... Yeah, I think Son is first, Madison second. I'd put Tony third now, Watkins fourth. Louise wouldn't be in my top five, personally, but it's up to you. Madison or Richarlison? Madison. Bailey versus Kudus? I would go for Bailey. I've currently got him in my team. Will Watkins start? I believe so. A lot of these questions we have gone through earlier. If you're free hitting, can you make a transfer for your regular squad? No, you can't. If you do that, it will just be wiped out and it won't go through. Uh, Vincent Rantek says, Tony Captain locked in. I can feel a hat trick. Hmm, okay, didn't, didn't need to know the last part, but good luck, mate. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Watkins had his birthday when I captained him um, back in December or something like that, January. He got two assists, but in the end, I changed the captaincy to Watkins and Salah, my original captain, got double the score. Uh, but good luck. Uh, thank you, Raxed. Um Live, best live stream, faster answering your questions. Thank you very much. Arthur Nice says, I ended up going for Hudson Odoi and Alanga. Yeah, now Hudson Odoi was in good form recently. I think he scored in three consecutive games back in February. But yeah, um, Hudson Odoi is a bit of a risky pick, of course, by all, you know, stretch of the imagination. Alanga is certainly my preference. Yeah, I mean, look, it's subjective. Uh, some people like Dylan RCM. And that is still my username and other platforms. It's both. You can search both of them up on YouTube and you find my channel. So that's not too shabby. Yeah, I mean, if I'm being honest, FPL, Dylan, and, you know, everyone's got FPL in their name, don't they? But it's uh, to do with the search results and the SEO. Uh, I'm just trying it out, seeing what happens from it. And um, yeah, I might just go back to Dylan RCM in the future anyway. How did Coventry make the FA Cup quarterfinals? Well, they got the job done. You know, also a bit of luck of the draw, a few factors coming into play. But uh, in terms of the result right now, I have no idea what's going on. So I'm going to quickly check how Wolves are getting along in the FA Cup. Um, I'm assuming they're going, well, they're ahead by your comment. Um, oh no, it's still 0-0. I'm going to keep an eye on that. So yeah, that's quite interesting. You would expect Wolves to go through, but... Like I say, Coventry winning makes Bournemouth doubling in 34 a real possibility. So keep an eye out for that result. It's very important. Be sure to drop a like as well on the video. Let's get this stream to over 200. And we do have, well, less than an hour left until the deadline. 46 minutes to be precise. You can see the uh, countdown clock there. 
you think Brennan Johnson is going to get good minutes? Tricky. Um, with Richarlison now back, you've also got Werner. We have a rotation going along with Werner and Brennan Johnson. It's not a nailed on pick. A bit similar to Hudson Odoi as well. Um, I think you'll get 50, 60 minutes. I just don't know if he's going to get 70 plus. And uh, that's another reason why I haven't really considered him this week. Uh, then I've got the same free hit team, but instead of Bailey, I've got Kudus and I've benched Morris for Alanga for now. That's fair enough. It's a good free hit team. Best goalkeeper after Flecken says Kyron. Can't do Flecken if I have Wissa, Tony, and Region. Uh, really slim pickings. Probably Ariola um, is the best one on paper. I just don't see many clean sheets. You could argue uh, Vicario as well, but you probably have free outfield Spurs players anyway. So if you can't go for Vicario, I'd probably say one of Ariola or Sells. Jarvis says, good afternoon all. Tell me why I should save my free hit. It's team dependent, mate. Honestly, it. Do you have seven plus players? You know, without taking hits, do you cover most of the key options? If so, you can save it for later in the season. It's going to be a low scoring game week, and I think the margins will be quite, you know, tight, and a lot will come down to fifty fifty calls and a lot of luck. So, yeah, I think you've got a decent number of players, good quality players. You can save the free hit for later for a higher scoring game week like thirty four, which could be a mixture of blanks and doubles. Uh, I'd rather go for Flecken there instead of Collins. Are you sure Bailey will start? Yes, uh, I think he will. Who is better, Murillo or Nuno? Um, probably Murillo. Not much to separate them. Luca Dean. If I had to pick an Aston Villa defender, it's probably Conso Luca Dean. I think he will start. Andy N says Son, Madison, Kudus, Bowen in the midfield. Yep, yeah, good midfield. Um, I do prefer Alanga though over Kudus. Gibbs White. Doesn't have great underlying numbers. He is on penalties, but I think Alanga has the higher ceiling. Dawson Dean on my bench, that's fine. I don't think I'd start him this week. Gibbs White or Alanga, I'd go for Alanga. I've covered this multiple times. Thoughts on drawing Bayern? Uh, it's a tough draw. Arsenal also have to face Man City or Madrid if they were to go through. But I think Arsenal have a chance of going through. Uh, I think they can beat Bayern Munich. But Bayern's individual quality, their experience, and their Champions League pedigree... I think gives them the edge. And also having the first tie being at the Emirates, that's another advantage. Although you could argue that Arsenal, you know, with by not having any away fans, that could also play into Arsenal's hands. There's a lot to think about, but yeah, I think Arsenal are the better team, but with everything factored in, Bayern are the favourites. How about Collins? Um, my favourite Brentford defensive coverage is Flecken, Region, Ruslev and Collins, probably in that order. Maybe you could put Region ahead of Flecken. Yeah, Wolves never make it easy in any game. They love to win by one or two goals maximum. Yeah, ironically, Wolves are better against the so-called better teams like a Chelsea or a, a Tottenham Hotspur, where Wolves are underdogs and they're playing this counter-attacking football. Um, yeah, you are right. Elango Gibbs White, I've covered. Elango's my preference. You can also see him in my squad. Fleckin or Collins, I covered. Um, let's see what else we have. Dr. Dar says, are we considering the fact that Son's record is far worse than Madison's versus Fulham? I've covered this all week, um, actually. And that's why Madison was my original captain. And Madison hasn't blanked away from home this season, which is another big plus in his favour. Bailey, Kudus or Douglas Louise says Techno Costa 11. Uh, from those three players, I'd go for Bailey. Dogish says taking a minus four for a non-playing player will be two minus two risky this week. Yeah, uh, considering this, why not go for a minus eight to get 11 playing players? Because... A lot of the players you're selling, you might want back by gimmick 30 or 31. And the players you're bringing in this week, unless you're going for a Son, Madison, Tony, Watkins, etc. A lot of them are unreliable picks and they're not the ones you can really bank your hat on to really get the job done. That's why. It's up to you. You can play it the way you want. But for those taking a minus 12 hit, for example, this week, you know, it's going to be a low scoring gimmick in my opinion. And to take a minus 12, for example, I think it puts you in a bad position to get a green arrow for this week. Uh, Jan Balada says, free hit active. I risk against Aston Villa. Ariola, Region, Bodra, Doughty, Elanga, Bowen, Kudus, Madison, Son, Tony, Captain, Morris, Moniz. And who to bench? Uh, from those players, I'd bench Moniz. But it is quite close. Um, wait, how many players do I need to bench there? Would that also have to bench? Yeah, I think it's just Moniz. Um, I like your midfield and attack. With your defensive line, though... You know, going against Aston Villa completely, it's a risk. It could pay off, but I personally think Villa will score. Koopsie Koop says, Hey Dylan, should I do Saliba to Borro or Foden to Madison? 
Borro would help me in gimmick 30. Yeah, in that case, I'd go to Borro. Eight players without a free hit. Thoughts? That's fine. So long as you're covering the best options this week, you're good. How many minutes do you predict Elangan to play? At least 70. Region starts. Okay, that's good. Morgan Gibbs White or Chong? Probably Morgan Gibbs White. Can you compare Kudus and Paqueta, please? Uh, I'll try to do that fairly soon. Um, if you have six players playing, do you play a free hit or take a minus eight hit? Uh, I'd rather play the free hit than take a minus eight hit and get to eight players. Bodro, Romero, or Odogi? You can see the answer on screen. I've gone for the Spaniard. They're all good options, though. There's not much to separate them. But in terms of attacking potential and bonus points, I think that gives Bodro the edge. 3-5-2 or 3-4-3, depends who you're benching, who you're starting. Uh, so if it's Mor Morris or Elanga, that's a very close call. I'm deliberating on that decision myself. So it really depends on that. Uh, Dean or Alex Moreno to start? Dean, I think, will start. In terms of Bayern not having away fans, uh, they, they got a ban based on what they did against Lazio. So in their next away game in the Champions League, they won't have any away fans. Arsenal will be able to occupy the away section with their own fans. Pedro Porro or Madison or any other suggestion? Madison's my favourite uh, out of those two. Once again, with the formation questions, it depends on who's playing, not just the formation. That's not really relevant. What are your thoughts on Chris Wood? Nice differential this week. 13 points against Luton Town last time out. Um, not a great away record, with the exception of that hat-trick against Newcastle. He's blanked in every other away fixture this season. But Luton Town are there to be targeted. I don't know about Mbumo, if fit or not, but if true, the birthday boy can rock. Anyway, my captain is Son. Difficult to choose between them. Even Tony is not in his good form. Yeah, of course, but form swings, you know, like a pendulum, and it could be Tony's time. You know, football's so difficult to predict. That's why, you know, we get so many decisions wrong in FPL in terms of captaincy, benching headaches, even our transfers. But yeah, Tony's a great shout this week. I have moved him up in the ranking to third over Watkins after the injury status. And with Mbumo back, I think that's a massive boost for Ivan Tony. Is a doggy a good option? Yes, he is. He definitely is. Uh, Hayden, who will get a clean sheet? Uh, I don't think any of them keep a clean sheet, but who's more likely to? Brentford. Any news on Madison? He posted a story um, which does indicate he will be in the squad. I personally think he will start, but uh, not really any concrete news, so to speak. What's the maximum points Madison can score? I'd say 11, but he's very likely, in my opinion, to get 6 to 9 points. Morris or Barkley to bench? I'd rather bench Barkley. Kudus or Morris? Uh, Morris for me. Shaker Maker says, Hi Dylan. Barkley, Douglas Suisse or Kudus? Kudus. Should I go with the FPL scout team? Uh, I don't know if I remember what they put, but you don't need to just go for what they suggest. Also, have your own picks, your own gut feelings in there. What that provides is a good template. They might have one or two differentials, but I'd always back your gut and go for your own picks. Uh, Walking situation, nothing new from yesterday and what I covered in the team selection, so there's not really anything else. Thorson Ayer instead of Borro or Kulizewski instead of Bailey. Uh... In terms of Brentford defenders, Region and Ruslev are my favourites, with Region being my preference. As for Kulizewski instead of Bailey, I'm not against that actually, um, but yeah, I'd go for Porro. I really would. Kaminsky or Ariola, I'd go for Ariola. Uh, would give me free Spurs players, says Ben. What is the question? Oh, yeah, I, I personally prefer Porro. That's just the way I prefer to play it. David says, thought some people continue asking questions which can be answered by looking at your team. Uh, I mean, sometimes people will, like, they watch multiple streams and they maybe copy and paste questions and, you know, they just wait for an answer. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's part and parcel of, of the game, really. Um, sometimes I actually highlight someone's question as well. I answer it. The same person, they ask it again. That's, you know, maybe the more frustrating thing, but it is what it is. That's massive. The Emirates full of Arsenal fans versus Bayern. Yes, but I would prefer having the first game at the Allianz and then knowing what to do at the Emirates. But look, it goes both ways, right? The last time that happened for Arsenal, it made no difference. They got battered in both games. Um, just open YouTube. Hope you're all right, mate. Any news about flag teams? Um, Watkins, Emerson, Region. With Region, Thomas Frank has been optimistic all week about him. Um, and he should be ready for Burnley. So I'm very confident about him. Apparently, he's going to start, according to uh, another YouTube. I think it was Let's Talk FPL. 
As for Watkins or Emerson, Emerson I'm not so sure about. Um, I think that's going to be down to a late fitness test. With Watkins, nothing new from Thursday, where Emery said he's got a cut on his leg and they're hoping he's ready for Sunday. So I personally think Watkins and Reguilon will start. And with Emerson, I don't think he does. I think it'll be Creswell instead. Uh, maybe I missed something, but what happened to Madison? Well, there, a lot maybe is being overfought and, um, you know, a lot of... Uh, detective work is going on in the FPL community but Watkins wasn't spotted in the video yesterday for Spurs training but he did post something today about him being in the squad you know he posted a picture of him um, and normally when a player does that it indicates they will be in the final squad will he start it's not a guarantee but I personally think he will uh, yeah way saying but Barkley was the 60th highest scoring midfield in FPL before double gimmick 28 he's not necessarily a must-have Chong's in good form but yeah, I'd rather go for Morris. Brentford have only kept one clean sheet in the last 20 games. They're due, Andy. They're due. Uh, Madison versus Richarlison long-term. Madison is more injury-prone, but I do prefer Madison for bonus points, creativity. And with Richarlison, he was kind of dying down a little bit just before he got injured. Uh, thank you, Kieran. Massively appreciated. Uh, Kat says, not to sound negative, but is a free-hit squad from those eight sets of players really the best way to use it? Lots of good squads missing. Mine's been gone for a long time, so just wondering. Um, is a free squad from those these eight sets of players? Well, it's team-dependent, Kat. That, that's the thing. So some people only had four or five players this week, including myself. To get to seven players, you need to take a minus four hit. And for example, you, you're gaining four extra players and you also save that extra hit. You're already kind of up. You're going to gain, make a gain from your non-free hit team. So that's the way... You know, the free it can pay off for those that really need to use it. For others who already have a good number of players, they can get to 10 with only a minus four hit or even with no hits at all. You're covering most of the key options. In that scenario, you obviously save it for later in the season. So ultimately, it's team dependent. Get Wissa or Tony. Uh, Tony for me. But Wissa is undoubtedly in better form. Ken Back says, Hi Dylan, best first bench defender for Region. Have Borro and Doughty starting. Um, I'm not really a big fan of most of them, but you could consider Murillo um, or Sufal, maybe even Luca Dean as well. I think one of those three, and you just kind of back your gut in terms of the most likely to keep a clean sheet from those three teams. I can't choose between Alanga and Gibbs White. I'd go for Alanga. Uh, Kudus and Paqueta, probably Kudus for me as well. If you could do a stats comparison, that would be great. We'll do that quickly then. Um, that might help you out. So was it Gibbs White and Alanga? Uh, I covered this earlier in the stream, so I'll just leave that up for a little while longer. Uh, and after, I'll do Kudus and Paqueta. Uh, Manase for Madison. Already got Moniz and Odogi. It depends who you sell. Uh, Madison can be useful in Gimmick 30 as well. But I'm not a big fan of taking a Manase or above in a week like this, which I expect to be low scoring. Gibbs White or Barkley, who to start? I prefer Gibbs White slightly this week. Do you think that McGinn being out will affect Villa's attacking potential? It's tricky to say because we haven't seen it yet. Um, so we'd be purely speculating and giving our own opinion on what will happen or what could happen. Um, I think it could. You're right. And it's also a difficult game. Uh, I don't think Villa's record at West Ham is particularly great anyway. Um, so yeah, it's something to think about. And I might even bench Bailey as a result. Griggle says, Dylan, this is how you could be called in Georgia. Next time you read um, Dilnico, you will know that Georgian is writing you. Okay, fair enough. I didn't even know that, um, that the Georgian version of Dylan. Unless you're trolling me, but I'm guessing you're not. Uh, big thanks. No worries, mate. Is Doughty really injured or just a rumor? Uh, Goldhead said earlier, uh, a user in the live chat, that Doughty was spotted with an ice pack on his ankle, something like that, um, in Sky Sports. So I'm not sure, you know, how serious the injury is. It could just be a bit of swelling. Uh, good luck to you as well, Juma. Can't wait to see Kane playing North London Derby in a red and white shirt. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, his lifelong dream. Hey Dylan, hope you're well. Likewise, Safair. Is that your locked in free hit team? Uh, not fully locked in. Like I say, there's a few things that are subject to change. I could start Elanga over Bailey or um, or Kudus or Morris. The captaincy is less likely to change, but I'm not going to rule that out definitively. Madison was my original captain after all. Bailey or Kudus, says Roy. I would go for Bailey. Uh, and that answers Aaron's question as well. Wildcard in 31. That's why I minus say I was thinking to get Tony. Uh, Madison, Bowen, Borro. Yeah, but who are you selling as well? And you might want some of the players you sell in Gemic 30, but if you're wildcarding fairly soon anyway in 31, that's fair enough. Kudus or Paqueta? Uh, Kudus for me. 
And uh, we might as well go for a stats comparison of those two players now, since uh, it's being asked by a lot of people. So let's put these two players in, Paqueta and Kudus. Uh, just give me a second. Lucas Paqueta. Uh, yeah, here we go. I take a while to load. And Kudus. So in terms of a stats comparison for these two, uh, Kudus has double the number of goals, one more assist. In terms of shots, also a significant number more. Uh, shots on target, not great though from Kudus, only 12, but very clinical to score from half of them. Shots in the box, 22 for Paqueta, 21 for Kudus. Both of them, of course, have missed a lot of minutes this season. XG, Paqueta has higher. Um, I think penalties has something to do with it. Expected assist, Paqueta is also higher. Big chances, Kudus has one more. Big chances created, triple the amount for Paqueta. And key passes, also 11 more for the Brazilians. So overall, in terms of shots and goals and assists, Kudus is the pick. But in terms of other underlying numbers like XG and key passes and creativity, Paqueta has the edge. So not much to separate them. I personally prefer Kudus. I think he's a quality player who doesn't need many chances to score. And he also is a tricky winger to deal with. He can win penalties. But Paqueta could be the penalty taker here, especially in Ward Prowse's absence. Very tricky call, but I would go for the Ghanaian Kudus instead. Let me know your thoughts, of course. The underlying numbers, though, they're actually worse than I expected. I thought it'd be much better than that. Um, but it goes to show you sometimes um, quality players can get the job done with very few chances needed. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it um, in regards to that. I've covered other polls already uh, early in the stream. The Ollie Watkins news all covered uh, and stats comparisons that people wanted to see. Let's now go back to my team where I might be making some changes. Um, and yeah, be sure to drop a like, by the way. We still have over 200 people watching, which is massively appreciated. And we have 28 likes left to get to 200. Pradip says Elango Gibbs White. I prefer Elanga, and you saw a stats comparison just a few minutes ago. Um, Wildcard, probably either gimmick 31 or 35, in between that time period, basically. Uh, bench boost, probably in 37. Toflo Murillo or Dean Sufa? Um, Murillo is my favourite, but there's not much to separate all of them. Um, but Dean versus Sufal, I'm currently going for Sufal, but I could change that. I'm honestly not really too sure on either. Uh, Anand says, hey Dylan, last time Arsenal made it, uh, somehow made it to the Champions League final, they beat Real Madrid. Maybe there's an outside chance they make the final. Well, there's also that stat about the last five teams to beat Porto have gone on to reach the Champions League final, but... I would want to win it, you know. Reaching the final and losing would be heartbreak. Um, and Arsenal have a great record at Wembley. So if they were to reach that stage, you know, beating the likes of Madrid and City in the semis and being bang in the quarters, you'd fancy Arsenal to then win it against Barcelona, PSG, Dortmund or Atletico. But there's a long way to go first and uh, Bayern is going to be very tough, to say the least. Um, Kudos versus Gib White. I prefer Kudos. Odds on Morris scoring today. I'm not sure what the exact percentage is, but I think Morris has a good chance. Based on the AI model, McGinn is the most influential player in Villa's team. Yeah, I also think Kamara is the other one who's injured, of course. So, yeah, that could be a massive blow. Those uh, stats just favour Elanga, I'd say. Yeah, I, I agree. And also Elanga um, doesn't rely so much on penalties like Gibbs White does. Bailey or Elanga? Uh, I'm currently going for Bailey, but that might change. Having four penalty takers is tempting. Douglas is great for bonus points as well. That is true. That is very true. Very good underlying numbers too. Um, no, any, no, no league news whatsoever. If you see anything on Twitter, be sure to let me know. Dylan, do you think West Ham will start Ings and Antonio? If yes, will that favour Bowen? I don't think they start both. I think they start one of them. Um, you know, Antonio started the other day, didn't he? So... Might be a tricky one. Uh, maybe Antonio will be benched, but yeah. And we'll, we'll probably start with that lineup. It's tricky with West Ham. They do have some good options in the midfield and forward line, but yeah, I personally think Bowen, either way, he's fine. Playing on the right, playing up front, he's a good option regardless. And I personally don't think West Ham start two strikers. Bailey or Gibbs White, who to start? Bailey. The Keta and Madison is rumored to be injured. Uh, not sure about the Paqueta one. Um... With Madison, I think he will start. Best Aston Villa defender. Ponce is the most nailed on, the safest pick. I think the one with the highest ceiling is Luca Dean. I personally think he'll start, with Alex Moreno playing the full 90 against Ajax on Thursday. Region or Ruslev? Region. Nico Williams is my Nottingham Forest defender. That's fine. Bench Morris and play Kudus, says Tob. 
or um, 22. Want to play Gibbs White, so I have five midfielders. It's up to you. I personally prefer Morris over Gibbs White. Um, playing Kudus isn't really a bad thing. The underlying numbers aren't great, but he is a good player. Douglas Luiz or Kudus? Um, yeah, the reason why is because Luiz is away from home, and if you look at his away record, it's pretty poor. You know what? I might as well show you, actually, because, yeah, it, it's good to put into perspective. Let's bring up Douglas Luiz's away record. So, his first away game was against Newcastle, one point. Then we've got Burnley, two points. Liverpool, another blank. Chelsea, another blank. Wolves, another blank. Uh, Nottingham Forest, another blank. Tottenham, he actually got an assist and two bonus points. Um, Bournemouth away, blank. Brentford away, blank. Um, and to be fair, he didn't play that game. We won't count that. Um, Man United away, he blanked. Everton, same thing. He got a clean sheet point. Uh, Sheffield United, he got an assist. Uh, Fulham, he blanked. And Luton, he got an assist and a yellow card. So as you can see, he's returned in, what, three games all season on his travels. And the highest he's got is seven points. Now, one thing that you probably saw whilst I was reading off that list is that he got 15 points against West Ham in the reverse fixture. And look, a penalty easily swings it in Douglas Luiz's way and he becomes a great option. He gets massive bonus points and a great haul. So maybe you just need a bit of luck if you do go for Douglas Luiz, but I just don't fancy him in away games. Um, if, it, if the game was at home, I'd easily pick him. He'd be in my starting 11, 100%. Am I being a bit illogical? Maybe, but it's a pattern that's certainly there uh, to be seen. Most of his returns and big calls have come at Villa Park, and that's uh, something that you definitely have to also take into account. Let's go back to my squad there, uh, which is still subject to change. We do have 25 minutes left. Yeah, look how close your poll is. Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Uh, it was actually even closer a few minutes ago. Uh, but yeah, Langer is the one that people are saying to bench, but there is a lot of love for him in the live chat as well. I'm not completely against it, and it's a differential. Uh, in a week where the template is so strong, going for these lower-owned players can pay off, but I personally prefer Bodro for the attacking potential and bonus points. I have covered a question, Muggle. I'd go for Region, and you can see the answer on screen. Gibbs White or Bailey? Who to start? Bailey. Madison or Alanga? Madison. Thank you, Sefer. Massively appreciated, as always. Adnan says play one. It's probably going to be Bailey or Alanga. I'm really torn between the two right now. Um, and actually, you know what? I'm going to also go to Bailey's away record and we'll make a comparison there. That actually might help me with my final decision in terms of starting Bailey or Alanga. So if we look at Bailey's record away from home, of course, it's not just about away games and, you know, football's a funny game, but he blanked against Newcastle, also got one point, only played 45 minutes, didn't play at all against Burnley. Uh, against Liverpool, one point, only played 46 minutes. Chelsea, 15 points. Uh, sorry, 15 points, I wish. Uh, 15 minutes. Wolves, he blanked as well. Uh, only played eight minutes. Uh, Forest, 45 minutes. So yeah, doesn't look great so far. Tottenham away, 45 minutes. Bournemouth away, though. His first start, he got a goal and seven points there. Uh, Brentford, three points. Uh, he got an assist and a yellow card. Uh, Man United, two points. Everton away, three points. Not looking great. Sheffield United, he got a goal. Uh, Fulham away, he blanked. Luton, he got an assist and a yellow card, just like uh, Douglas Luiz. So really, yeah, both Bailey and uh, Douglas Luiz have been quite poor away from home. But then again, with Bailey, I think he does have better points per 90, much better than Douglas Luiz, in fact. And away from home, the same does apply there. But yeah, uh, I'm not going to lie. Even if you look at Alanga's away record, it's not that great either. Uh, Chris Wood, the same thing, apart from that hat-trick against Newcastle. So you can kind of look at that pattern for any player and just be put off by them. But yeah, football and FPL doesn't work that way. It's just something worth considering when making these decisions. Um, Cannon Fodder says, already sold Gordon to Madison. Now have nine starters. Should I do Solanke to Tony for a minus four? Or maybe Foden to Burn for a minus four? I would do... Uh, I think nine stars is fine. I really do. I don't think you need to do um, another one per se. I think if I had to pick one, it'd be Solanke to Tony for a minus four. Bowen versus Douglas Luiz. Um, this week, I prefer Bowen. Adil says bench order for Dean and Nico Williams. Tricky one. I mean, probably Nico Williams first. I really like to captain Tony, but I'm worried to go against Son. Back your gut, Wasing. If you think Tony's going to outscore him, go for it. I've done it. Chris Wood in. Good luck, Goldhead. Morris or Bailey? 
I'd probably say Morris, actually. You know, thinking about it now, probably Morris. Morris or Woods, I'm currently going for Morris, so that's going to be my answer, but Woods a good differential. Chris Wood, that is. Adil Ali says, would you transfer out Richarlison from minus four to field 11? Richarlison could be in the squad, and might, he might even make a cameo, and who knows what he can do in that short space of time, but unless you're going to Son or Madison or someone like that, I would just stick with the players you have. Bailey or Morris have covered, second in my mini league, winner gets 250. Hope he doesn't copy my team this week. Yeah, that's a, a very common practice in mini leagues. Any thoughts on Wissa over Watkins? I prefer Watkins still. I think he's going to start and do well. Uh, and Watkins in his last three away games has scored five goals and got three assists. He's been incredible on the road recently. Uh, but Wissa, good option. I like him this week. Toast says Hallen to Tony and Foden to Madison for a minus four or do one only? I'd probably do one only. Um, which one? That's where things get a bit tricky. I think selling Haaland to Tony does appeal to me more because you can buy Salah in Game Week 30. So maybe I'd go for that instead. Uh, Adil says, managed to catch up to second in my mini league. Have a feeling first will free here also. Any differentials you think I could get that could help me close the gap? Well, Elanga would be a differential for me. Um, Chris Wood is another one. So I think one of those two, if not both, could be the play. You could go for Ruslev instead of Region. Um, and maybe even go about things differently. Go for Wiss up front and then sacrifice one of Region or Flecken. So those are some ideas for you. Uh, Morris or Gibbs White? Morris. Mara says Bailey, Elanga, Wood, bench one. I'm currently benching um, Elanga, but I don't have Chris Wood there. Um, I think Chris Wood would be the one to bench from those three, but I'm not going to lie. The more I think about it, the less keen I am on Bailey. So that could certainly change. Region starting, I think so. Do you think West Ham could win? Yeah, of course they could win. Will they? I'm not so sure. I'm anticipating a draw right now. Uh, Madison or Bowen, says Sebastian. Madison. Dylan, Aston Villa out DM. Again, Kamara not as strong and secure. Who's going to play in DM now? Um, I need to get the name up because I, I did forget. Let me just get this up very quickly. By the way, Wolves commentary is halftime. It's nil-nil. So uh, pretty interesting there. So if we look at uh, Aston Villa, let's see if I can get the name up. I don't want to chat nonsense, do I? Uh, yeah, they can play a guy called Tim, and this the surname that was kind of catching me off. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not going to say that. But yeah, Tim... Irobuna? No, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, yeah, he could play as the DM, allowing Douglas Luiz to further venture forward as usual. But yeah, that's the one who will probably play in that position. I'll call him Tim. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the one who's going to play in that position. Of course, it is a massive downgrade on McGinn, but he could do a decent job in the interim. But uh, yeah, that is what Aston Villa could do. Be sure to drop a like, by the way. We are 14 away from 200, and we are also 90 minutes away from the deadline. Almost 80 minutes. Differential forwards apart from Wood. Um, Wissa. Definitely Wissa. Thank you, Linus K, for the super chat. Massively appreciated. Tony, birthday brace incoming. I wouldn't mind that, even if I don't captain him. Um, yeah, if you do captain him and he does something like that, then fair play. Good luck to you, Linus. I'm guessing you're uh, captaining him there, so I wish you all the best. It will be your Douglas Louise. Douglas Louise. Andrew says, fair play to you this week, Dylan. It's hard work with so many repeat questions based on only eight teams playing. I appreciate it, Andrew. It's always, you know, repeat questions are a part and parcel of it. Um, sometimes it's understandable. It's just, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into that too much. Richardson to Madison for a minus four. Not sure I'd take a minus four hit for that because Richarlison will be available by gimmick 30. Madison's injury prone himself. Yeah, I mean, this week, could it pay off? I think so. It's just a really tricky one. I think I'd just about go for it, but it's not necessary. It's not 100% necessary. Yeah, I think Region starts, as I covered earlier, and apparently it's um, confirmed by Talking Bees. Not sure how reliable they are. I'll quickly verify that, but thank you, Nuclear Atoms, for the live chat comment. Talking bees. Where are you? Uh, what's their Twitter? Might be talking underscore bees. I, I can't find them, but... Yeah. Talking bees. Um, sound like a maniac. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure when, uh, what the Twitter page is, but hopefully it's reliable. Look at Kudus' returns at home. The first few games he came off the bench, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's another thing to consider. You might be right there, Safir. Bench Kudus or Gibbs White? I'd rather bench Gibbs White. 
Thank you, Jay. As always, Tony's birthday uh, today. Yeah, might be a reason to captain him. Uh, no, no Nottingham Forest leaks. If you see anything, be sure to let me know. Imbumo benched, apparently, according to Talking Bees. Thank you, Nuclear Atoms. Um, waiting for the leak, says Vivan. Fair enough. And Zehan says, would you do Foden to Madison or Solanke to Tony for free? Um, my preference would be Foden to Madison, assuming you can buy back Foden in Gimmick 31 or 32. Dean or Ruslev? I'd go for Ruslev. Dylan, will you pick Watkins in the free at team? He's in my team. Uh, I don't think I'm going to sell him unless we somehow get a confirmation now that he's going to be benched or that he's out of the team entirely. Chris Wood starts, says Amir. Uh, yeah, let me know where you got all this information from. Try put a, a link in the live chat. Uh, so yeah, I'll end this poll. 38% of you have said to bench Alanga. In second is Bailey with 35% and Morris third with 28%. So thank you for uh, all those votes. Thank you for those that liked the video. Be sure to get this to 200. That'd be massively appreciated as well. Um, and yeah, now it's time to lock in our teams. Be sure to do so. I'm going to now quickly check uh, what um, Sefer said about Kudus' returns, because I think I did check that as well. I sometimes like to look at these patterns. It causes overthinking and bad decisions. But all right, since um, Kudus started in home matches, uh, so Everton was his first start, right? No. Oh yeah, he got seven points against Newcastle, but he came off the bench. So against Everton, one point. Forest, he got a one pointer as well. Palace, nine points. Uh, Wolves, sixteen points. Massive haul. Man United, nine points. Brighton, he didn't play. Uh, so next game, Arsenal, no, did nothing there. Brentford, five points. But yeah, it's a pretty good record. He's returned in most games at home. Uh, Burnley did blank in the last game, but he should have got the assist. He really should have. I'm not sure why FPL removed it. But uh, yeah, it's time to lock everything in and see where we go. Uh, really interesting stuff coming. Twitter handle talkbees underscore. Okay, thank you. Oh, because I put talking bees, um, and that's probably their name, but not their username. Thank you for that. Okay, I'm not sure how reliable they are. Um, but yeah, I'm, I haven't seen any bad comments in the replies. Uh, hopefully he is reliable and it's all looking good. So yeah, apparently Mbumo benched. And um, Region starts. Late to the pie. Any Watkins or Madison news? Nothing really from yesterday. Nothing. You know, Madison posted a story which indicates he will be in the squad. But with Watkins, there's nothing new from what I talked about yesterday. Bailey or Elanga? I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going to change to Elanga. I think he's got a high ceiling this week. Thoughts on Wissa for the free hit? Yeah, I like him a lot. If you're not going for two Brentford defensive coverage, I'd go for Wissa. Thank you, Sanjay. Um, Juntao says, hi, Dylan. Bailey or Kudus? Kudus has that home advantage. Um, I have gone for Bailey all week long, but I'm kind of getting cold feet, to be honest. It will be your Morris. Morris. It's my daughter's birthday. She's a 900k. Hope the free hit hit the target. Happy birthday to your daughter, Rolly. Hopefully she enjoys it and does really well in FPL. Although that's not a big priority, in my opinion, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Maxter says 7.8 million in the bank. Which midfield differential punt to support Bowen and Son? Eight players. Uh, Elanga. Definitely Elanga. Are we here and Madison is injured? Uh, I think he's fine. I mean, he wasn't in the video yesterday for training, but let's wait and see. Luton Town and Forest fighting to be out of the relegation battle. I think it should be a high-scoring game. But it can go both ways, right? Both teams could be scared to lose and to fail, and it could be a cagey game. So I personally think it will be a high-scoring game like you, but the nature and the importance of the game could actually go the other way and favour defenders or make it a kind of frustrating game from an FPL perspective. Uh, Jonas Y says, I have three players, but three is my only chip left. I don't know uh, if I want to use it and if I miss out on the double game week. I get what you mean, mate, but if you've only got three players this week, you're almost certainly going to get a red arrow, even if you've got Madison, Tony, and Son. I think you need to use the free hit, personally. I know it's not looking great, but you're gaining eight players. You're avoiding hits. I think it's worth it. Dean or Ruslev? Uh, Ruslev. How about Toffolo over Mario and Williams? There's not much to separate all three of them. I mean... Maybe, it, but it's literally like Zabany or Kirkes last week. And, you know, those that went for Zabany were fortunate in the end. And really, I went for Zabany because of minutes and looking at the long term. Uh, but yeah, in this scenario, I really don't think there's much to separate all three of them. Good luck to you as well, Cooker. We've got 12 minutes left until the deadline. Be sure to lock in your teams. Uh, get this stream as well to 200 likes. That'd be massively appreciated as well. Uh, we have done, so thank you very much. Keep on liking anyways. And thank you to those that send in super chats too. I'm looking at some uh, 
different leaks and stuff like that and i don't see anything whatsoever no no leaks at the moment uh, just the talking bee stuff which hopefully is reliable still having twitchy feelings to get a langer for a minus eight yeah i do like a langer as a differential this week but just not sure if it's worth a hit especially if you're going to bench him in 30 and 31 could us or louise could us what's your guess on percentage of people using free hit this week um in terms of overall fpl users i'd say 20 30 percent yeah 30 yeah 30 percent i'd say in terms of engaged managers probably 60 percent ruslev or region uh, Region. Bench one, Bailey or Alanga or Morris. Uh, I'm currently benching Alanga, but I might change that, to be honest. I, I might. So, yeah, that's um, that's something I might change. Um, yeah, that question we've answered. Diaby or Kudus? I'd go for Kudus. I, I really would. I think he's the one to go for. Uh, yeah, I can't see anything on Twitter. I really can't. Which is a bit frustrating, to say the least. Very frustrating. Yeah, can't see anything. If you see anything, be sure to let me know on Twitter. Uh, very important to lock in this free hit now. Will Moreno likely start? I don't think so. He played the full 90 against Ajax. If I start any blanking players, will be the players... Will the players PM? Oh, on my bench, come on. Yes, they would. Um, Elanga or Ruby? Uh, Elanga. Bowen or Madison? Uh, Madison this week and for next week. Whistle, Wood or Awani for Solanke? For a single gimmick punt, I'd say Wood. Um, but I do like Whistle for the next couple of weeks and also good fixtures until the end of the season. So you could even keep him in the long term. Um, you know what? I'm probably going to say Whistle there. Very close though between him and Chris Wood. Thank you, Blood Type Arsenal. Uh, do you think a minus eight will be overkill to fill the eight players this week? It's not ideal. I definitely want to take a hit for a goalkeeper. I wouldn't do that. Um, but if you're taking hits for the likes of Madison, Son, Tony, Watkins, that's fine. Start a language with me, Dylan. We will see glory. I'm, I, like I said, I'm really tempted to do it. In my final team selection, I put him in. I had him in my starting 11 overnight, and I changed it again. It's really close. Uh, is anyone else worth it for a minus eight? Yeah, just the players I mentioned. Son, Tony, um, Watkins, and Madison, in my opinion. Of course, you have the others that differential so to speak that could really pay off uh sam formations aren't really relevant it's about who you're starting so if it's morris or alanga it's a close call but yeah it's the formation isn't that relevant uh dylan for a minus four i have Ariola, taylor doughty song captain madison bowen watkins tony do you think i should keep the free hit for match day 34 or not yeah it's a tough one um but your team looks okay this week actually you know even for a minus four hit there is a distinct chance you have a green arrow or at least maintain most of your rank. So, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Morris or Kudus to start? Probably Morris. Probably Morris. Uh, game over, says Carr. Fair enough. Uh, thoughts on starting both Alang and Gibbs White? I'm not against it. I'm just not a big fan of Gibbs White. Um, haven't been impressed by him in FPL this season, but it'd be typical for him to score now to make me look like a fool. Morris or Alanga? I'm going for Morris at the moment, but I think I'm going to put Alanga in somehow. I, I don't want to bench him. Alanga or Bailey? Uh, yeah, that's one of my dilemmas. I put a poll out, and most people went for Alanga, but it was very close. I think Alanga had 38% of the vote. Bailey had 35%, and in last was um, Mr. Morris, actually. Saliba to Region for a minus four? Not for me. Especially if you aren't wildcarding anytime soon. Fabianski start, really? Let me know where you got that from, Aguero, because that is big news for those that aren't free hitting. So, yeah, put a link in if you can. Do I get Madison or Bowen and then Region for an extra minus four? Uh, I'd get Madison and I wouldn't get Region for a hit. Cash or Moreno or Dean? I'd go for Luca Dean. It's time to swap Bailey with Elanga. We know it's coming. Like, I'm literally deliberating. I'm overthinking it. I'm not sure, but I want to put Elanga in, I have to say. Morris or Solanke to go for Tony? Uh, I'd rather sell Solanke because Morris is obviously playing this week. You can always reverse the transfer in Gemic 30 or later on in the season. Son or Bowen captain? Son. I like Bowen for this week, but I wouldn't captain him. Uh, Douglas Luiz or Alanga? I would go for Alanga. Uh, Twister Park, he says, starting for me. Ariola, Leno, Bench, Region, Doughty, Son, Bowen, Tony, Morris, Madison for Foden, Solanke out for who? Um, I'd say Tony, mate. Uh, wait, what? What the hell happened there? Oh, sorry, I just got shook. Let me just... Am I still streaming, by the way? I don't know what the hell happened there. 
I thought I accidentally pressed the end stream button. So yeah, I'd go for Tony there. I I'd go for Tony. Jesus, I got. A s I literally just uh, gave myself a fright there. I don't know what the hell happened. Oh my lord! What are you doing, Dylan? Oh no! Uh, yeah, I um, I'd go for Tony. I think that's the best answer there. Uh, yeah, just making sure. Oh, you already got Tony. Um, yeah, no Watkins. I'd still go for Watkins, mate. If not Watkins, Chris Wood. I'll go for one of those two. You don't have... Well, you got Region, Tony. There's a space for Wissa. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's, I'd say Wissa. I'd go for Wissa there. Uh, why no Kudus? You can't have everyone, mate. You, you really can't. And Aston Villa are a good team still. Why does no one have Matty Cash? Uh, because he's got like, what, 10 points or something since Game Week 10? Honestly, check his record. It's abysmal. He's not a good FPL option. Uh, start two of Elanga, Kudus and Bailey. Uh, Elanga and Bailey, dare I say? Still, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, I'd probably go for Whistle there, uh, Twisted Parky. Yeah, I didn't see that either. I'm not sure where... Sometimes people spread misinformation or they got it from a source that's unreliable. Uh, Dawn, I have covered your question. I said, Dean, Ogbeni and Bailey on a differential. Uh, Ogbeni, I'd, I'd be more keen on Bailey, not Ogbeni. Thoughts on Fafana? If you were to go for any Burnley asset, it would be him. Yeah, Tony is one of the only options I consider captaining over Son alongside Madison. Douglas Luiz or Bailey, I'd go for Bailey. Uh, best keeper, I favourite Kaminsky over Flecken. Luton Town are terrible defensively. Doubt is the only one to go for because of attacking potential. Kaminsky does make saves. Uh, via FPL Claret and Blues Patreon. My bad for not putting it where it's from. No worries. Yeah, I think they have gotten things right in the past. I think they do have inside information. It's just a bit weird for, um, you know, Ariel to be benched now. It's quite strange. Uh, Bodder or a doggy? Bodder. I'm going for it myself, so. Uh, Bowen or Kudus? Bowen, same thing. Twisted Parky, no worries. Uh, Tony Captain, he's third in my list. It'd be Son first, Madison second, and Tony third, with Watkins in fourth. Um... Yeah. Interesting, though, if Ariola were to be benched. So that's something to keep an eye on. That would definitely be a big disadvantage for non-free hitters. Start Toflo or Ruslev? Uh, Ruslev. Already have Fleck in doubt for doubling up on any defence. I understand that, but Brentford are the most likely on paper to keep a clean sheet. And if you get that spot on, a double clean sheet is massive this week. Of course, I do understand. I also think it's not looking great. Um, looking at my own team, I think I'm going to put Alanga in, but who do I put him over? It's Morris or Bailey. It really could backfire, couldn't it? It really could. Um, also, the prospect of Bailey playing against Creswell looks amazing. But I think I'm going to go for this. Alanga in for Bailey and go for Morris up front and hope for a high-scoring game between Luton Town and Nottingham Forest and have returns from Doughty, Morris, and Alanga. Let me know what you think of that change. Would you do it? Say yes or no in the live chat. I'm kind of in two minds about it. Uh, I overthink a lot in FPL. That is, let me be quite clear on that. I really overthink. Um, but yeah, I've got Flecken in goal. Region, Pedro Borro, Doubt is the back three. Very template there. Bowen, Madison, Son, and Alanga as a sort of differential, I'd say. Tony, Morris, and Watkins. Other players I am considering that could even make it very late on are Kudus, Leon Bailey, Douglas Luiz is still an option. Um, Chris Wood and Wissa, which would require a bit of a, a makeshift, a bit of a change in the back line. Either Flecken or Region would make way as a result. But yeah, I think I'm going to go for Alanga. Um, as I mentioned before, I think that's going to be a high scoring game. Um, that Forest versus Luton Town one. Um, yeah, Punjabi says yes, fair enough. Uh, Tony Captain says Omara. Yeah, I mean, look, he's a great option this week. I think he's going to break his goal scoring drought. Uh, Crotterman says best defend outside of Bodder and Doughty. Um, already have triple Brentford. Well, apart from Romero and Odogi, if you can't go to those options, it's probably going to be. Yeah, it's slim pickings, mate. Maybe you go for Murillo or a Nottingham Forest defender in terms of clean sheet chances. Bailey or Morgan Gibbs White already have a Langer. Bailey. I rolled a transfer for Hoyland to Watkins from minus four. I have six playing players. Fair enough. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Minus four, six players. If you have a free hit, I'd use it. Uh, FPL Clare is a Burnley fan. Oh, right. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that, that is true. I, I, when I heard Clarets, for some reason, I just thought of the colours and I thought of uh, West Ham. Yeah, it's not them. Uh, why injured Region? Because Thomas Frank said he's fit all week long. That's why. 
Um, would not do it, says Aiden. Fair enough. Um, thank you, Punjabi, and to everyone else who's put their feedback. Fruit Plug says, do it. Does Wissa start? I think so. But there is a chance that Malpai does, you know, and it's Malpai and Tony up front. There is that odd possibility. Uh, and Boomer's apparently benched, which would make sense. So Wissa would be really a one gimmick punt. That's it. Also, Nawobi, probably Fulham's best midfielder asset, but that doesn't say much, does it? Kudus or Gibbs White? I'd go for Kudus. Um, if I did a minus four and have 10 players, should I take another hit to get Bodro? I just stick to the 10 and don't take another hit. I think Fulham score. Uh, thank you, Punjabi, again. Uh, two West Ham mids, Kudus and Bowen. Good or not? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I like Kudus for this week, and um, he's got high ceiling in home matches, so that's fine. Kudus or Bailey? I'd go for... Uh, it's a close one. I'm probably go for Bailey, but quite a close call. Chris Wood in for me, just a case of starting Tuffalo or Doughty. Doughty's got by far the more attacking potential, but if you look at clean sheet chances, you'd maybe give Forrest the edge, but not by much. So as a result, I'd go for Doughty. Yeah, West Ham colours are Claren Blue. Yeah, true, true. I, mean, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I haven't checked the, their account, but I'll have to check her again. Um, I'm not really assuming a Burnley fan will have that information a week after playing West Ham. You know, that's already gone in the past. It wouldn't be relevant to them. Uh, time is nearly up. Good luck, guys. Yeah, it is now. Uh, we are logged in, so I've made my bed. I put Bailey on the bench. Ugh, let's see how that pans out. Son's my final captain. Um, Madison's my vice. So my final team for Blank Gimmick 29 is Flecken in goal. Region, Pedro Porro, Doughty, Bowen, Madison, Son, Elanga, and Tony, Morris, and Watkins. My bench is Ariola, Bailey, Murillo, and Sufal. Yeah, um, I think the players I'm most worried about this week are Kudus, Bailey, Douglas Louise, and Wissa. I think those are the players, you know, that could really undo um, all of this. Um, and also looking at other players, I mean, Chris Wood, he's going to be a mega differential, but he's a, one I would tip to do quite well. Um, a dog, your Romero, maybe they can get bonus points over Porro, but yeah, I think Romero is probably the more likely one to do that. Then you've got a doggy with the attack and potential. Captain Tony, yeah, but I saw Paul Dunn. I, my plan was always to captain a Spurs midfielder. I've done it. It might be the wrong call, but it's my gut feeling. Um, my team says Alan Madrid. Ariola, Robinson, Doughty, Son, Bowen, Tony Captain, Morris, not free hitting. Looks good. Good luck there. Um, you could even get a green arrow, actually. Deadline pass. Good luck. Yep. Cayman Horner, good to see you. Thank you, John Paul. You have the most interactive FPL content. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Mr. Parkio 6 says, locked. Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> locked in indeed. We are, Punjabi. Uh, Via says, good luck. Um, even four match game week can be this much confusing. Well, yeah, because it's limited options, but there's some big 50 50 calls. Bowen or Kudus, do you go for both? Gibbs White or Langer? Morris, do you go for Morris over one of those Nottingham Forest attackers? Do you start Doughty? Pedro Potter or Doggy? There's so many 50 50 calls. That's why um, it's still difficult despite the lack of fixtures. Good luck, Safair, and everyone else. Seconds to go, and I went for Region on a minus eight because I only had Taylor and Doughty. That's fair enough. Um, it's just you need that clean sheet to really pay off, you, you know. I, but let's wait and see. Elanga will not disappoint us. He should not. Hopefully not. It's the first time I've owned Elanga and Bailey, so I'm hoping it goes the right way and I've ordered it correctly. Good luck to you as well, John. Uh, good luck as well, Wei saying I got Wissa and Madison for a minus four. Yeah, Twister Park, yeah, I like it a lot. Of course, with Mbuma coming back, Wissa might be a very short-term pick, to say the least. You've also got Malpai in the mix as well, but surely there's no way Wissa's benched, right? Three games in a row, he scored him. Uh, one off the bench and in, in two consecutive starts. Let's wait and see, though. Uh, like the stream, guys, and good luck to everyone. Likewise, Abdella, thank you very much. Good luck, bro. I'm hoping to get into the top 100k this week. I hope you do, Adam. And uh, I also wish the best to everyone else watching. If you've got any more questions or comments, be sure to let me know. Drop a like as well on this stream. And let's try to get this to 250. Why not? Uh, it also goes a long way to help in the channel. Uh, also, a massive shout out to the Chambers patrons, all those that send in super chats. It's massively appreciated. But uh, yeah, we are locked in for this game week. We are locked in. So let's, um, let's see what else we can do. Yeah. Um, in terms of the leaked news, let me check that actually. FPL Clarets and Blue. Um, he is a... Well, yeah, he's a Burnley fan. Jimmy the Claret. I think that's the one, right? Claret FPL. Uh, if that's the guy you're talking about, 
but no, I think it's probably someone else, right? I think it is someone else. I need to double check that page. Claret and blue. Claret and blue. Claret and blue army. I think that's the one you're talking about, isn't it? Oh, right. I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea, but that will be very interesting. Um, yeah, Ariel being bench would be very strange in my opinion. Very strange to say the least. Thank you so much as well, Lawan. Uh, you're really helpful. Thanks, champ. Good luck. Likewise, mate. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you. And help Dylan reach 23k subs ASAP. Yeah, we're quite close. I think we're just under 300 away now. Um, yeah, the plan is to get to that by the end of the season. So there's still two months left. Hopefully we can do it. I play for Fana over Bailey. Good luck. Uh, I wish you the best. Although that would go against my interest. Predictions this game week and FA Cup. Okay. I've gone without my beloved Louise. He's been my differential beast this season. And I've not gotten him the free hit. Hopefully that's a good sign. Bailey on the bench too. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, I went through their returns this season away from home. They're not great. I don't think any of them have got a double digit return on their travel. So if they do it this week, it would be a disaster for those that benched him. I saw Region still got the assist while facing big sides and had lots of chances to even score. So banking his attacking potential. Yeah, against Chelsea, he got an assist and he also could have scored in that game. You're right. Next week, transfer thoughts. Um, I covered this in my team selection videos. I could buy Gusto to bolster my defensive line. To buy back Salah, it would require minus four hit to sell the likes of Watkins or Haaland and also make a change in the midfield by selling Saka or Foden. But yeah, I'm keeping my options open. I could even wildcard next week or 31. It depends on injuries. Um, it's also a nice time to wildcard during an international break at times. So I'm keeping my options open. But um, yeah, I think one of Gusto or Bradley could come in the back line. And in the midfield, my big priority would be Salah, either in 30 or 31. I missed my free hit this week. When's the next good week for wildcard and free hit? Uh, wildcard gimmick 30, 31 or 35, depending on your chip strategy and your team uh, situation. With a free hit, I'd say gimmick 34 or 37 is a great time to use it. Oh my, I missed the deadline. Only six players if Watkins is out. Yeah, not ideal. I think in those sorts of scenarios, um, yeah, if some people are like taking hits to get to six players, I'd rather use a free hit in that case, but I do wish you the best. Burnley had the same lineup as last week, apparently. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. They got a positive result against West Ham. They did fumble that 2-0 lead, but it is what it is. Adnan says, hope my nine players give me a green arrow. Yeah, you've covered most of the key options. I think you will get a green arrow, to be honest. Good luck there, Adnan. I'm not trusting anyone unless... Um, let's talk retweets it. At least for Talking Bees, he did retweet that tweet. Fair enough. Yeah, it's always important to verify sources. Um... And look, for example, a few months back during the UCL Fantasy stream, uh, someone, I think it was you, who mentioned FPL Tony. And I was like, who is FPL Tony? But I went for it. And it was kind of like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. And it ended up being a reliable source. And now everyone goes to FPL Tony for Man City news. So yeah, it, it can be a, a difficult thing to, to verify sometimes. It really can. Thank you, Awali. Uh, much, much appreciated. I'll go for the predictions right now. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in. When will we know about the future double gimmick dates? Well, by gimmick 30, we should have a clear idea uh, of the doubles in 34, and consequently, what doubles could happen in 35, 36, and 37. So, yeah, after the FA Cup results this weekend, going into gimmick 30, things should be much clearer in terms of the exact gimmicks certain fixtures will fall under. So, will Man United double in 34 or 37? The current projection is gimmick 37, but just two weeks ago, it was gimmick 34, which would have meant Sheffield United at home and Newcastle home for Manchester United. I think my transfers and captaincy change went through. It has already gone 130, but it said saved. I had selected and saved Son, but for some reason it changed to Tony after the mad transfers. Yeah, the transfer should have gone through then, but um, there's always a fine line. I mean, if it says saved... Yeah, in my experience, whenever that's happened to me, it hasn't gone through once it hits 130. Um, so I hope in your case it has gone through and it has made the transfers and changes you wanted. Uh, thank you, uh, Dakesh VS, for the super chat. Massively appreciate. And also, uh, thank you for your contributions to the chat. What are your thoughts on yesterday's UCL draw? One side of the draw is very difficult and the other one seems very easy. All of those teams, you know, Borussia Dortmund, PSG, Atletico and Barcelona will be fancying their chances of reaching the final. Um, and they would be probably underdogs if they face Madrid or City. Bayern Munich, maybe even Arsenal, dare I say. But yeah, I think uh, whoever reaches the final 
between Man City, Madrid, Bayern Munich and Arsenal are the most likely to win it, in my opinion. Would you consider Solanke triple captain a failure? Uh, no. It's disappointing, underwhelming. You know, if he scored that penalty, you're looking at a massive swing, 15 plus points or something, and that's like an amazing triple captain. So it's another example of what could have been. Uh, like with Erling Haaland, who missed three, four big chances in double gimmick 25. So it is what it is. I'm now going to go through my predictions very quickly. There's only four games, actually. So Burnley versus Brentford. I'm hoping Brentford keep a clean sheet. But I'm going to go for 2-1 Brentford. Uh, Luton Town Forest. High scoring game is what I'm anticipating. Don't know why I'm speaking like Yoda. Um, wow. I think I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Fulham versus Spurs. Another one which is very difficult to call. And Fulham have been quite decent. Um, especially at home. I think I'm going to go for a 2-1 Spurs. West Ham versus Aston Villa. Probably 1-1. One, one. So those are my predictions. Doesn't look great, does it? And I'm hoping for cliche for Brentford, at least. Um, some goals and assists from my FPL assets, but it's not looking great. Uh, for the FA Cup results, and by the way, let's keep an eye out for the um, the uh, Wolves versus Coventry result. Let's see what is going on right now. Very quickly. Um, if I can actually find it, it would be great. Oh, Championship. Where are the, where the bloody hell is the FA Cup? Oh, Coventry are winning. Oh, did, when did they score this goal? Oh, they, wow, it actually happened some time ago, uh, 15 minutes ago. So remember, if Coventry beat Wolves, Bournemouth are very likely to double in Gemic 34. So yeah, uh, currently Coventry are winning. Wolves are going out as things stand of the FA Cup. I'm not going to put a prediction for that game because the game's already going on. On uh, Man City versus Newcastle, I'm going to go for a... 3-1 Man City. For the other FA Cup results, uh, Manchester United against Liverpool. I'm going to go for a 2-1 Liverpool. Yeah, 2-1 Liverpool. I think it will be a tight game. Um, and Man United do have that home advantage, but I think if Liverpool go strong, which they should do, I think they get the job done. Chelsea versus Leicester. Um, you know what? Probably like a 3-2 Chelsea. Why not? Um, so yeah, those are my predictions for this week. Not really full of confidence, but it is what it is. Thank you to those that are still tuning in, by the way. It is massively appreciated. And if you do tune into the streams next week, there is a chance you'll be gifted a membership for free for an entire month. Ken Back says, thanks Dylan. Let's hope Alanga over Bailey works out. Yes, I made that change very late on. I don't have a great history of that, but let's not talk about it. You have to save transfer and refresh the page to 100% guarantee the move. Oh, uh... Well, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if he said that with Twisted Parky. It said it did, then I refreshed, then it said updating 1.39pm. Well, I'm guessing that's 1.29pm. Worst case scenario, I have Tony Captain, but transfers went through. Was on the fence with that captain shout anyway. Yeah, le let me know how it goes, Twisted Parky, in the next reaction stream as well. Good luck, Callum Jr. That's why Mikel is our legend. What a mad draw he does. Ugh. Uh, forget the 1.39 copied from Discord, no worries. Wolves are pants, it's a fair... They're very unreliable, and with all the injuries they have, they're just looking very vulnerable at the moment. Yeah, I remember I saw FPL Reactions, who makes articles on Scout as an excellent UCL fantasy player, tweeted asking for help from FPL Tony, and back then he was known for UCL. Uh, so I said, watch out. Yeah, I appreciate you telling me that at the time, because I think that gave me a 20, 30 point swing. I went for Foden as my transfer. He got a double digit haul, if I'm not mistaken. I captained Haaland. He did very well too. Uh, so that went very smoothly. Uh, yes, I predicted commentary, says Christopher Parkey. Uh, New Clam says, Cheers, Dylan, for another helpful stream. Region has to work for me this week. It's a one-week punt. I'm hoping it does, for both of our sakes. Even if the transfer doesn't go uh, through, it's fine, I guess. Yeah, of course, it's a, it's a risk. And um, you'd rather take the hit than, uh, you know, not take the chance. And, um, you know, you see Region end up hauling and you're like, I should have gone for it and not listen to this idiot called Dylan. Uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in. It's been a pleasure talking to you for the past almost three hours Two hours, 45 minutes we've been streaming for. If you haven't already, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new. Also, check out all the links in the description below for the patron.
Championships Discord server, the FPL League, and also my Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM, and much more. There's also the links to my Spotify and Amazon Music. You can listen to all of my videos and live streams as a podcast. Drop a five-star rating on those platforms. You might have to use your mobile phone for that, but it'd be genuinely appreciated if you watch those and also put a five-star review. And also follow me on all those platforms I mentioned. There's also a link to Draft Town, and I'm on Reddit nowadays. You can catch me on there as well. I'll go through some last few questions and comments as always. Um, need Morris Hattrick. I've started him this week. So yeah, I really need something from him. Just the park, he says, I went Wolves 1. Uh, so commentary 2-1 against Wolves. Man City 4-1. That's a good prediction. Chelsea 2-1 Leicester. May change for uh, Leicester. United 1, Liverpool 2. Yeah, um, I think Man City 4-1 is a great shout, actually. And also Chelsea 2-1. Uh, thank you, Safir. As always, 3-0 Brentford, says Twisted Parky. I wish. I really wish. That would be amazing. Luton 2, Forest 1. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, if Alanga scores or assist, that'd be pretty decent. Doughty assist and, uh, you know, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'd want Morris to score as well, wouldn't I? Um, yeah, Morris to score a brace. How about that? Sounds great, Twisted Parky. Um, I'm guessing you're going to put your other predictions you know, for Tottenham and Fulham and all of that. And what's the other game? West Ham, Aston Villa. Amazing set of games, isn't it? Uh, yeah, 2-1 Spurs. Uh, that's fair enough. I'll, I'll leave you to put the last comment as well uh, before we wrap up. So, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, curious to see what you're going to put there. But, yeah, um, I've gone for that as well. 2-1 Spurs. I think Luton and I went for 2-2 and 2-1 Brentford. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need better than that for this free hit to work out. But um, so long as I make 20 points over what I would have done with my normal non-free hit team and over those that aren't free hitting. I'm pretty happy with that. 2-1 Villa, depending on the lineup. Yes, and if that's the case, I'm going to be worried as um, a non-Douglas Louise owner and also having Bailey on the bench. I'll see you very soon for more FPL and UCL fantasy streams. The reaction stream could happen tomorrow. I'll keep you updated and also all the usual content for those fantasy formats. Take care, enjoy the football, and I wish you all the best of luck for Blank Gimmick 29 and the rest of the season. And I'll see you next time.